It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Texarkana, Arkansas. Emporia State and Southeastern have made their way to the Texas-Arkansas state line, getting ready to take part in another Division II bowl game. The tailgaters are out today supporting both these teams. They're all excited to be here, and we are as well. Division II football continues here today. I know there are playoffs throughout the country and bowl games going on as well, and this is an exciting one. The Live United Bowl 2022. Alongside Chase Hartzell, I'm Joey McWilliams, and it's a privilege to get to be a part of this bowl game again as the, the weather has been cooperating with us today, and it's a rematch of last year's bowl game between Southeastern and Emporia State. Savage Storm took a three-point victory in that one. And it was an instant classic. Trey Keats etched his name in Southeastern history with a game winner in the final 10 seconds of the game. I'm sure he wouldn't mind being the last man on the field in this game as well, going for that last play. But we've also got to give credit to Dalton Hatley, the MVP in that game, had a great effort that led up to that drive for the game winner. And he's looking to be an MVP again here today. We're going to get a look at the matchup between these two quarterbacks. Dalton Hatley's had another great campaign, first team all GAC quarterback. And you can see these two quarterbacks, their numbers are very similar. Both like to air it out a lot. Braden Gleason is also a threat on the ground, as you mentioned. There's a 3,063 yards there for Dalton Hatley, and then you have 3,151. So Gleason with the slight advantage in that category. But in terms of touchdowns, it's actually Hatley that has the slight advantage over the Harlan Hill nominee in the form of Braden Gleason. So Gleason's had a great campaign as well. Second team all MIAA. And these two quarterbacks are going to be looking to make a statement in today's game. You know, it's not often you get to see two 3,000-yard passers on the same field as you see Hatley right there. He's had back-to-back -back seasons with 3,000 yards passing, looking to add to that number. Last year's MVP with a fantastic performance and uh, definitely a leader on this team. Gleason has been recognized, one of the candidates for a Harlan Hill Trophy this year. And he does it not only with his arm, he's a dual threat, has the 31 plus 100 plus yards passing, but also uh, he's been able to pick up a lot of uh, yards on the ground. So a big bowl game matchup, a rematch on the way here in the Live United Bowl. And we look forward to bringing it to you. So stay right here. Emporia State's Darren Higgins, coach there, been with the program for 20 years, head coach for, excuse me, with the program for 15, head coach for 20 years, and he's, he has left his mark there since 2011, really turning things around. Uh, the Hornets have won right at two-thirds of their game since the midpoint of the season there, just kind of found things, found things going the right direction, 81 and 43 since that point. And it has been a, a fun ride for the Hornets in his tenure. They were so close to making the playoffs this year. Just uh, maybe the bounce of a ball one way or the other. Southeastern uh, coming off one of the biggest turnarounds. In fact, the biggest turnaround in all of Division II from 2021 from the previous year. You go back to 2019. Of course, the COVID year doesn't really count there. And, and it, it's been a fantastic ride for both of these teams. As Emporia State won the toss, they deferred. And Southeastern will receive Emporia State to kick. Southeastern moving from west to east. And we are about ready to get things started here from Razorback Stadium. Texarkana, Arkansas, the 2022 Live United Bowl is underway. Fielded at the five-yard line and making it back to about the 12 before he's thrown down at the 17. Nice recovery, nice return by Caleb Whitley. That was Jack Barger making the play for Emporia State. Excellent kick coverage, as you mentioned, Joey. Now, this is going to be a game of field position. These are two teams that have talented defenses. One of the defensive players to watch for the Hornets today is going to be at the linebacker position. That's going to be Dawson Hamas. He was named to the second team All-Super Region. And he's the team's leader in tackles. He's really just a do-it-all guy. Leads the team in tackles. Has several tackles for loss. And he's also got a pick and a forced fumble. Jason Wu in the backfield alongside Dalton. Hatley, the quarterback. And Hatley with the give to Wu. Splits a couple of potential tacklers at the line and will make it forward for three. Second and seven on the way after a short gain on first down. Southeastern is a team that likes to go to the air, but in this game here, you're trying to establish trying to establish dominance up front there. The battle between the offensive line and the defensive line, that battle in the trench is going to be key to victory. And Southeastern did a good job there of establishing the run game, staying ahead of the sticks with a three-yard game. 
Three receivers now for Hatley. Expect him to throw the ball when he has an opportunity. But the give, the fake actually. Play action pass across the middle. Nice catch by Braxton Kincaid, the senior. There is a penalty flag down at the end of the play, so we'll see what the call is. But Joey there, you know, we hear about it a lot, the run setting up the pass. You don't always see it that quickly in a turnaround, but Southeastern able to use the play action there to pick up the first down. Interesting call and, and a nice description by the officiating crew right there as Kincaid's helmet came off, but it was not something that he had done. It was part of the foul there, so he will be allowed to stay in the game. Kincaid with his first reception of the day. Braxton Kincaid, one of the uh, strong receiving core for Hatley over the last couple of seasons. Kincaid now his 35th reception this season. The first down and then the 15 yards has Southeastern passed midfield. Hatley with four receivers now. Quick throw. And just past the first down marker. Nice completed pass. Juice, Deuce Pittman, excuse me, a junior. And there's been a good receiving core for Hatley these, these last two years specifically. Now, one name we're going to talk about a little bit more as we get into this is, is Marquise Gray. He's been able to be utilized more. Pittman, Kincaid, there have been some injuries sometimes when they haven't been out there quite as much this year, but Hatley has such a great core of receivers to uh, just pick and choose. Another first down and the give to Wu now. And he will try to push forward. He'll pick up a yard and even forward momentum right there. Trying to mix things up a little bit there for Southeastern. Again, trying to establish the run game up front. That was a good adjustment by Emporia State from the previous run. They did allow just three yards on that last play, but already seeing improvement in limiting any forward progress. Second and nine now. First possession for Southeastern. The sun has come out here in Texarkana. Starting to warm up just a little bit in Arkansas. Hatley facing pressure, heaves it down the field, really has nowhere to go. Jordan Wallace creating that pressure and getting into the backfield. Wallace was in hot pursuit that time, and a heads up play there by Hatley, really showing off his experience that time. He was able to get outside of the tackle box and throw it away to avoid the loss. But again, as you mentioned, Joey, great pressure by the Hornets, and now Southeastern going to have to face a third and long. Receivers to both sides for Hatley. Wu again in the backfield with him. Emporia State rushing just the three. Hatley fires and finds Gray. And the catch is made. First down for Southeastern. Well, Joey, we were wondering how long it was going to take for Marquise Gray to make an impact in this game. The answer is not too long. Gray running a great route there to the right side and an excellent job of keeping his feet in bounds. That play is not easy to make, but that's the reason why Gray is a first team all GAC wide receiver, making a great play there to keep the drive alive for the Savage Storm. Gray with nearly 1,300 yards receiving this season. He has 13, 17 touchdowns, excuse me, to his credit. Wide side of the field with three receivers to Hatley's left. And he's going to hang on to it and take the sack there. Emporia State, the first sack of the afternoon. It is Cade Harrelson. That time the pocket just collapsing in around Hatley, and all I could do was go down. Excellent pressure. And that time Harrelson lining up as a linebacker. You're going to see it here. Excellent pursuit. He made the perfect read off of the snap. And that's going to back the Savage Storm up a bit. We're just doing a good job of getting pressure early here. Hatley has been able to resist it at times, but that time he goes down. Now five yards on the loss there. Just an inside give. And ripped down after a gain of three is Wu. Credit Wallace again for the tackle. I think he got some help there from Hamas as well. 
Thomas again, the leading tackler for the Hornets this season with 92 tackles. He's also had nearly 50 solo tackles on the campaign. Look for him to be playing in coverage as well here, potentially on this next pass play. Third and 12 now for the Storm. Need to make it to the 16. And Hatley looking to his left, and that one floats harmlessly to the ground, trying to find Kincaid. And misfire there for Hatley. It brings up fourth now and long. Offense not in a hurry, really, to get off the field right now. We may see them try to go for it here, or at least try to beat the defense here with the hard count to maybe try and make it a more manageable field goal or even a more manageable fourth down conversion. Play clock below 15. So the offense will stay on the field. And so here on the first possession of the game, it is four down territory for the Savage Storm. Emporia State's defense has given a little bit, hasn't break, broken. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> and the Hornets come through in full force. A flag comes in after the fact. But Emporia State's defense strong here on the first opportunity of the game. It's Jordan Walsh, the DB, who made the play. Sideline warning. Nothing really, no harm, no foul there. That's an excited Hornets group here on the sideline. And in a bowl game, you want your uh, teammates to be excited about everything. Maybe calm it down just a little bit. The warning is there, but how big was that sack? That's huge. Anytime your defense can get a stop, hold the other team off the board, and then give your, your offense a chance to try and take the lead early, that's always going to be beneficial. And that was just a great play there by Wallace. He lines up as a DB in most plays, but that time he came in with the blitz. He wasn't in coverage. He ended up going along with the rest of the house for the Hornets, and they ended up picking up a huge sack for the stop. We'll see the Hornets on offense when we come back here on the Live United Bowl 2022. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. You want an education that's gonna take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Here's to the fearless fight. The comeback. The battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path, a chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield live fearless. Our first opportunity to see Braden Gleason and that Hornets offense here this afternoon. And Brooks with a carry of a couple of yards there for Emporia State. Quickly, they're going to get back in and hurry up with that offense. And now we see Gleason's arm for the first time today looking down the field and in and out of the hands of Corey Thomas. He had his receiver beaten there, or defender beaten there, but had to come back for it and couldn't bring it in. And Jaden Poole also doing a great job there of pushing off there to force the ball free. Poole's had a great campaign. He's first team all MIAA. Doesn't necessarily rack up the interceptions, but he's got plenty of deflections and he's popped many balls free out of the hands of receivers throughout the campaign. So Coach Fenwick has decided to go ahead, decline that penalty, brings up third and long now. 
Emporia State wanting to go with a hurry-up look on the first couple of plays. They have to slow down after the penalty. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Kincaid go back that same direction again. Looking to his right, has to find another receiver. Does just that, gets the first down and a little bit more there. Cole Schumacher with the catch for the Hornets as Emporia State moves past midfield. Schumacher ran that route with precision and Emporia State trying to keep the momentum rolling here, going no huddle yet again. Man in motion and Gleason's looking to his left, has to check down once again. Runs and slides, he'll pick up about a yard and a half on first down. And you can expect to see that at least a few times here today. Gleason does, has over, does have over 250 yards rushing. He has 261 coming into this game. He's also scored seven times on the ground in addition to his 28 passing scores. Yeah, 67 carries per game. It's a nice average there of right at around six per game and the pass once again to Schumacher and once again a first down. Hornets on offense are on the move. Schumacher's been the hot hand here on this drive. He got the, fir th the third down conversion earlier in the drive. Gets the another first down here for the Hornets. It's been a great day so far for the redshirt junior from Kansas. Well, you know, Gleason has so many different weapons from which he can choose as well. We talked about the core that Hadley has. There are five receivers on this Emporia State team with at least 300 yards receiving. Hat, or excuse me, Gleason with plenty of time, and the ball was tipped in the hands, out of the hands, and back once again. The catch made by Cole Baird. Baird did a great job of sticking with that ball. Secondary did the best that they could to try and knock the ball away, but Baird sticks with it and walks into the end zone for an early score. Beautiful pass that time from Gleason. And the Hornets picking up that all-important first score of the game here. They're up 6-0 early. We have a couple of uh, roster changes and a number there. So let's uh, that number one actually would be Jalen Varner, I believe. Varner picking up his ninth touchdown of the year. So we'll try to make sure we get those numbers right to you. Varner with the touchdown. And Emporia State takes an early lead, 7-0. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles. Delivering compassionate care along with leading edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. There's a place I'm welcome in. There's a place I know I'm called to fit. There's a place that I'm never alone. There's a place called home. A place called home. Come home to Farmers Bank. Emporia State with a Gleason to Varner connection for the touchdown. Seven points on the board and the Hornets score early here in the 2022 Live United Bowl. That kickoff will go out 
And so Southeastern will take over in good field position to start its second possession of the game. And, Chase, you go back to the, the first trip for Southeastern, moving down the field, get into, uh, well, relatively close to field goal range. Uh, we had a, a field goal win a contest last year for the Savage Storm, Storm team. They decide to go for it on fourth down, and the defense was huge for the Hornets, Hornets coming through. And, and you have to wonder, will they take that momentum and continue it? Looks like they did on the offensive side with the score. And we'll see if the Savage Storm again try to establish the run here, but looks like they're set with passing formation, empty backfield, and four men wide. Five men wide, actually. Dalton Hadley has been under pressure so far today. A lot of pressure from that left side of the defensive line with uh, Jordan Williams coming through. Just gets rid of that one second down on the way. See Williams coming through as well as Cade Harrelson. Sometimes rushing three, sometimes rushing four, but the result really has been the same. These Hornets up front have just been very strong. And a lot of it has been the pressure that the linebacking core has gotten on the quarterback. They've been blitzing a lot. And they've gotten in Hatley's head a little bit. We'll see if he can recover. Three on the line this time. Hatley's going to keep it and keep his head up and slide in after he has picked up the first down. A gain of 15. Ah, well, they're going to spot him at the 49, just this side of, of midfield. 14 on the game for Hatley. Beautiful option keeper there for Hatley. And credit the offensive line for creating enough space there to the right field. Hatley had plenty of room to work with. And he slides down, but not before he has a first down and then some all the way up near midfield. First down once again. Hadley has some company in the backfield now. Receivers split wide for him. And a flag before everything really gets started here for Southeastern. Movement. Braxton Kincaid is charged with that penalty. Ryan Hurt in the backfield with Southeastern. The bands are here today. And they are out in full force both. <laughs> Had excellent pregame performances and you heard Emporia State getting involved a little bit there. Price is right. Music there. Five yards back. And Hadley has four wide now three to his left and the give is to hurt hurt trying to find room on the outside the ball pops loose picked up and nothing but green for emporia state in for the touchdown second touchdown of the game for emporia state an incredibly good run the fumble recovery picked up by the Emporia State Hornets, and Declan Hobb, the linebacker, takes it all the way in for the score. Flag after the fact. And it was down near the line of scrimmage, so maybe a holding penalty here for Southeastern as the linebacking core was starting to get through. They played back a little bit that time, but able to pounce in at the, at the exact moment that they needed, and Hobb just taken off. It was off to the races. And it's going to count. It's a penalty against the Savage Storm. And how about that? A scoop and score for the Hornets here in the first quarter. Six more points on the board, and the Hornets are flying high right now. Another penalty after the fact as well. Things are not going right for Southeastern so far in the 2022 edition. Look at Hobb, just work on past that. And Hobb, a linebacker, looked like a running back there as well. Worked his way through. He knew what to do once he got the ball. Extra point is true. And Emporia State, halfway through this first quarter, has a 14-point advantage. Hornets are flying right now. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network.
And we're back for the Nukes MVP. For only $9.99, these picks really stand out. Yeah, the buffalo chicken sandwich, a real contender. Frank's red hot sauce, celery, carrots, cheese, and ranch. Mm. So much sauce, Bob. And the buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, just look at that for me. That cheese pull is just impeccable. For the chili taco salad, they put everything into this place. Just look at that drizzle. And at this price, it's tough to pick just one. You're right, Larry. I'd try all three. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. Third fumble recovery of the season for Declan Hobb. This one goes in for a score. 48 yards, I believe, officially is what they're giving. And the penalty after the fact on Southeastern, unsportsmanlike conduct allowed Emporia State to come up a little bit closer, and that was kicked well past the end zone. So Southeastern will set up shop now at the 25. But we talked about the Hornets on defense, and it comes up big right there. Again, Hobb, his third fumble recovery this year. And Emporia State, you got to be feeling motivated about how you've been playing so far. You get a turnover on downs to start out the game. Southeastern had a little momentum on that first drive, but able to stop them in field goal range. And then they decided to go for it, ended up getting the stop. And then how about that? creating points of your own there after setting up the offense for a score on the previous drive. And right now, the Hornets are in the driver's seat in Texarkana. Dalton Hadley is three for six so far this afternoon. He's going to keep this one pump fake and slide near the first down marker. He'll come up just a little bit short of there. Actually, they, they get him where he starts to slide at the 32-yard line. So a gain of seven, second and short now. And Emporia State has established itself here, not only on offense, but on defense, solidly on both sides of the ball. Southeastern playing uh, back on their heels right now. Hatley's been forced a little bit out of his rhythm, but he had success there on the runs to the outside, similar to what we saw in the option keeper before. We'll see if Hatley tries to do more on the ground in this one because he's gotten some good yards when he's gone for a run so far. The give. And pushing forward near the first down, going to make it all the way to the first town. Caleb High. Savage Storm again trying to establish the run game. And that one going for a little more success than we've seen before as they're able to move the sticks with a first down. We'll see if the Savage Storm can keep that momentum rolling here. Caleb High. 5'11", 215-pound senior. She's playing linebacker. Comes in to try to change things up again a little bit for Southeastern. Hatley with all kinds of time over the middle. Finds Gray, who spins around. Can't quite elude the second tackler. He'll push forward past the 45. They may give him enough for the first down, and I think they do. Ten yards on the catch, just got to the first down marker. And so the Savage Storm offense trying to find some life here in this first quarter. Marquise Gray, his second catch of the game, and this one again going for a first down. He was able to sneak over the middle uncovered and has a nice run after catch here. Gets just enough for the first down, but with one more spin move, I think he may have been gone for even more. Dalton Hadley just now into positive territory after that sack on his afternoon of guards gained on the ground. He's had four carries. Just now a plus three after that last carry. This time he gets rid of the ball, second and 10 on the way. Pressure continues here. Hatley, great job there spinning. Rolling to his left, can't find anybody open, just forced to throw the ball away. No options downfield, and credit the Emporia State secondary at that time for giving him no options. And we talked about these two teams, and as Southeastern has the ball looking at the season out, six and five on the year. It was a nine and three season last year in 2021. Uh, quite a turnaround, biggest turnaround in all of Division II, going from a one, one season the year before, and 
and a plus eight in wins as they give this time to Wu. Gets through a couple of defenders. He's going to get forward to near another first down. And they say it is a first down. So back-to-back -back plays, of, well, other than the, the throwaway ball there, a positive yardage, exactly 10 yards. Southeastern doing a great job of creating space there to the right side. And tailback able to just hit the hole and keep running for another first down. Southeastern looks like the run game's starting to get a little bit stronger here. And maybe that'll open up some more opportunities in the passing game as well. Emporia State with that early 14-point advantage. Hatley has three receivers. Play action fake. Across the middle, leaping up to make an incredible interception. What a, what a fantastic job. That was quite a leap. Jaden Poole with a pickoff. What a play there for Poole, just going up and snatching it out of the air. We're going to take another look here. Hatley thought he had his man. Indeed, he was looking for Cottrell Blakely, the senior. But snatched up out of the air by Poole. And Emporia State again has the ball here. Offense setting up for their second drive and a chance to go up by three scores. First interception of the season for Poole. And Gleason give inside. Brooks with the carry is going to pick up two. And you mentioned that being his first interception of the season. That didn't stop him from a first team all MIAA selection as he was a constant disruptor in that secondary for the Hornets. Quickly getting rid of it once again is Gleason. Another pickup. It's Corey Thomas that time with the reception. Corey Thomas, the leading receiver. He also made a first team all MIAA. He leads the team in yards with 661 yards coming into this game and adding to his total here. Thomas first catch this afternoon. Gleason hangs on to it, has a receiver downfield and a little bit beyond the in intended receiver that time. That was Tommy Zimmerman. We talk about Emporia State. Well, the offense just is moving too quickly to talk too much about them. But eight and three on the season this year, as you see Gleason just keeping that in the chest of the running back long enough to pull the defense in and gave Zimmer an opportunity. Now here we go, fourth down. They're going to go for it here, and Gleason is going to keep it. Throws to the outside, catch is made at the 46 and to midfield. Nice grab that time by Thomas. His second reception is enough to get the ball into Southeastern Savage Storm territory. And the chains move, and so do the Hornets. Quick on first down once again. Gleason thinks about Thomas. He's going to have to get rid of it and does. Wow. Gets, gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage and just barely getting rid of that. All kinds of pursuit for Southeastern. Well, the offensive line for the Hornets has looked strong up to this point, but Southeastern getting some penetration this time. But it looks like it's going to be moot as Emporia State's going to get some yards anyways off of a penalty, a defensive holding call. So they'll move the ball. Ten yards. First down for Emporia State and expect them to get back with this quick offense. Five wide now for Gleason. And the quick throw to the Emporia State sideline. Intended receiver that time was Zion Jones. Looked like he was trying to create some separation there on the right side. Really nothing doing and he wasn't ready for it. So it's going to result in second down for Emporia State. But again, Gleason has been very efficient in this game today. Has found his receivers more often than not. Give and run to the outside, getting past the corner and heading up field this time for Emporia State. Kanan Brooks is going to be close to the first down, just a little short. We have a flag again. There are two penalty flags down that play. There's one near the line of scrimmage, and then one was thrown at the end of the play, down near where the ball carrier was taken down for the tackle. So Southeastern warned, sideline warning there. Both teams have been warned there to, to stay back. Bowl game, final game of the season. 
have a little bit more juice flowing right here. You know it's going to be your, your last game no matter what. And the team's excited to get to be here this afternoon. Emporia State with the penalty. Brings it back quite a ways. Second and very long. Quick pass over to Thomas now. And Thomas jukes a little bit and then steps out of bounds. Getting back into southeastern territory, though. Thomas has been his top target, Gleason's top target on this drive, as he has been all season. Third catch of the drive. We'll see if he continues to be a big factor in this offensive attack for the Hornets. Gleason receives the snap from the shotgun. Takes his time, looks down the field. Good catch at the 25-yard line by Tyler Common. And we have a flag back in the backfield. Probably going to add some more yards to this one. Just a great job there by the quarterback resisting pressure. Gleason dropping back here. Delivers a beautiful ball downfield. Common doing a great job of leaping up and bringing it down. And I don't think our cameras caught it that time, but there was a late hit. A defender got there. Just a bit too tardy, and it's going to cost the Savage Storm even more yards here. It's going to be a red zone appearance now for Emporia State. Alex Reeder charged with the roughing the passer call for Southeastern. Gleason looking to the end zone, finds Thomas. Thomas leans forward and makes his way in. Touchdown number three of the day for Emporia State here in the first quarter. And the Hornets really... If, if they wanted, as you said, maybe a measure of revenge for last year's loss in this bowl game, they are establishing right off the bat they want to get a win here today. And look at this pass here from Gleason. Beautiful pass as he threads the needle a little bit there. There was quite a bit of coverage, but he found his man. Great catch there by Thomas, able to extend the play to across the goal line. Seventh touchdown of the year. And with that PAT. It's now a full three-score lead for Emporia State. 21-0, Emporia State on top here in Texarkana. The Live United Bowl 2022 returns back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people, matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. There's a place I'm welcome in. There's a place I know I'm called a friend. There's a place that I'm never alone. There's a place called home. Oh, oh, oh. A place called home. Come home to Farmer's Bank. Let's kick off again. A number of times already here in the first quarter. And Southeastern will return it to about the 23. Pause for just a moment and say, Emporia State's had a good season. <laughs> they have. Eight and three on the year, and we're talking about one, maybe two plays from, from making into the playoffs. Well, you look at some of the teams that did make the playoffs. They were one possession away from beating Pitt State. You mentioned that a missed field goal ended up causing a loss for the Hornets there, a heartbreaker there, and then another heartbreaker against Northwest Missouri State in the final game of the regular season came within a possession, and on that final possession, quite couldn't punch it into the end zone. But again, this Hornet squad is very talented. They've faced off against some tough competition all season long. They've been hanging with the best of the best. Eight and three, and it's a program that's strong anyway and continues going the right direction. And Dalton Hatley going the wrong direction now. That's a big tackle in the backfield there for Emporial, Emporia State, Dawson Hamas. He's been a big part of this defense as well for Emporia State this year. 92 tackles coming in, seven and a half tackles for loss, a pair of sacks and interception as well. He's just been a disruptor in every element of the game on defense, and that's a big reason why he was selected to the second team all super region, one of two all super region selections for the Hornets this campaign. 
Emporia State, four and three in bowl games all time. That one tipped and nearly corralled by Hamas there at about the 30-yard line. He knows he was close to getting another turnover for the Hornets here, and the first quarter is not over. He was looking for interception number two on the year, but still doing a good job there in coverage, dropping back and able to bat the ball away. And now Southeastern again facing a third and long situation. We'll see what they draw up here as they're trying to get some momentum rolling in their favor here in the final two minutes of the first period. Four receivers now for Hadley. Not alone in the backfield has Wu. Picks up the block. Catch at the 27-yard line and making it out to the, the uh, 35, a first down for the Savage Storm. For Southeastern, that was Hunter Hawthorne with the catch. Hawthorne running a precise route on that last play and a great job there of extending the play, extended the ball forward just enough to pick up the first down. I think he got an extra yard or two past the sticks as well. That's exactly what Southeastern needed here is they're trying to establish some momentum and keep this drive moving. We will go in motion now. Hatley to his right, sliding to make that catch is Marquise Gray. At the 45, and it's another first down for the Storm. And Gray making another tough catch there. That one almost slipping out of his reach. But that one's coming back. It will, and, and uh, that's been the story of the first quarter so far today. Southeastern really... Uh, even when things go right, they, they are not going right. Back-to-back -back plays picking up first downs, but a holding call will bring it back 10 yards, and now Southeastern looking at first and 20. So erase that second first down. It's going to be first down again, but uh, not the way they wanted it. Emporia State saying there was movement on the line. Not going to get that flag just yet. Hatley trying to get them to jump. He has plenty of time now. He's going to roll out, though, and keep it. Pick up maybe three or four as he goes out of bounds, second and long on the way. Coverage downfield really good on that play, and Hatley had nowhere to go when pressure on the line. Fortunate, actually, to pick up anything at all. And Hobb that time was serving as a bit of a QB spy, the linebacker. He played up a little bit and then followed Hatley as he was rolling off to the right side, but not before he scampered out of bounds for a few yards. Good job there by the quarterback to make something out of nothing because really, as you mentioned, Joey, no options downfield. Picks up five in the process, second and 15 now for the Storm. Four wide and the give is to Wu and he's brought down after a gain of two or actually after a loss of three, excuse me. And it's third and long on the way now as the first quarter comes to an end. A huge first quarter for Emporia State. 21 points on the board, two offensive scores, one defensive score. And Southeastern, you see them walking the sideline, head down now. They're going to have to make some adjustments as we go to the second quarter. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. Come home to Farmers Bank. And we're back for the Nukes MVP. For only $9.99, these picks really stand out. Yeah, the buffalo chicken sandwich, a real contender. Frank's red hot sauce, celery, carrots, cheese, and ranch. Mm. So much sauce, Bob. And the buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, just look at that for me. That cheese pull is just impeccable. For the chili taco salad, they put everything into this place. Just look at that drizzle. And at this price, it's tough to pick just one. You're right, Larry. I'd try all three. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. 
decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. There's been a lot of pressure from Jordan Williams in the first quarter on that defensive line. And on third and long, Hatley was pressured again, coughed up the ball. Williams is there to pick it up. A turnover again for Emporia State. And Southeastern was deep in its own territory to begin with. Emporia State has been gifted an opportunity on offense. Already knocking on the door of the end zone. And after a dream game last year, Southeastern's woken up into a nightmare early in this contest. That's an apt description, Chase. Emporia State now with the ball and all the momentum in this game. Every last bit of it is on the side of the black and gold and white. Gleason will keep it and make it back to the line of scrimmage. A flag after the fact. Got some shoving going on after the play as well. Gleason sliding in, picks up, well, gets back to the line of scrimmage. It's not going to matter, though. It's going to move the, the ball down half the distance to the goal. And we see here Gleason coming in, and he slides in there some contact after the fact. Hurry up offense once again. The carry's gonna pick up a, a, about a yard or two. Billy Ross Jr., first time we've had a chance to talk about him today. For Emporia State, the leading rusher on the team. Has 665 yards rushing coming in, eight touchdowns. He also catches the ball as well. One of those receivers, I mentioned five receivers that are Generally, receivers that have at least 300 yards receiving on the year. Billy Ross also with 300 yards receiving. Throw to the end zone. Catch is made. Jalen Varner with touchdown number two on the day. Emporia State up big here in the Live United Bowl. Just a crisp route over the middle of the field. Went into the end zone untouched. And that's a big touchdown for Varner. It's his 10th of the season. First player on Emporia State to get into double digits for receiving touchdowns this year. And the Hornets. Continuing to fly high here over the Savage Storm. We talk about stingers up. I think they are. No doubt. Extra point attempt is good. It's been a good afternoon today for Caden Dotson. 28 for the Hornets. Nothing on the board for the Storm. Back to moment on the GAC Sports Network. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. You want an education that's gonna take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, 
you can. Here's to the fearless fight. The comeback. The battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path. A chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield live fearless. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles, delivering compassionate care, along with leading-edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. Well, Coach Higgins has a lot to be happy about with his team. Coach Fenwick has to be shaking his head right now and, and looking at the plays and the game plan for today. You thinking a couple of things. And Gleason right there as Coach Higgins is talking to him. How about him? Touchdown number 29 and number 30 for the season for Braden Gleason. Past the 3,200-yard mark in passing this year. Jalen Varner. Has two catches on the day. Oh, and both of them are for touchdowns. 22 yards per catch. Fantastic day for Emporia State here in this bowl game. And the ball fielded by High eventually. Took it at about the 25-yard line. Bounced and bounced a fortuitous bounce. Right back up into his arms. And Southeastern will set up shop at its own 32-yard line. Looking into the day, I mean, we've talked about how these teams come in. Of course, Emporia stayed on a roll, Chase, but uh, really, did you see this for the first corner? I did not see this coming <laughs> because Southeastern Oklahoma State, they play in the Great American Conference, and the Great American Conference was very competitive top to bottom in its own right this season. The Savage Storm, you know, not every game has gone their way, but they've played some good football today. The game plan's worked for Emporia State. They've been able to get Southeastern out of sync, and everything is going right for them. The Savage Storm now, it's up to them to try and bounce back. And, you know, realistically, and, of course, uh, Emporia State, you talked about the GAC, the MIAA, always so strong year in and year out. Realistically, for Emporia State, as high, is going to gain about four, maybe five. I think they're giving five with four momentum. We haven't had a chance. Coach Higgins probably has so much still in this game plan and, and things that he could bring out if he wants to. He hasn't needed to. The turnovers have been giving his offense opportunities with the short end of the field to work with, and then of course a defensive turner will scoop and score on one of them. I mean, everything has bounced the way of the Hornets today, and, and it's uh, just been a great day for Hornets fans that are here in full force in Texarkana. Throw to the outside, taken in by Kincaid, will be close to a first down. We'll see where it's spotted. It is about a yard past the first down marker, so that's good for a first down. Good throw to the outside. Again, this is a talented Southeastern team. Things haven't been going their way early, but they still have the capability of going out and putting up some points and putting up some points in a hurry. If they keep running routes like that, things are going to start turning in their favor. And he has a man in motion. Receivers a lot to his left. Little pitch back. Kincaid, little trickery. Kincaid looking down the field. And this one is nearly picked off. Wow. Right there again, the Hornets on defense were ready. And it would have been interception number two on the day and the year for Jaden Poole. He leaped up. He was grabbing. He's looking like a receiver out there right now. He's a ball hawk out there for sure in the secondary. Has the nose for the ball just like a receiver, as you mentioned, Joey. That time making a great play on the ball. It was going to be tough to handle that one, as you see there. Almost came up with it, but it popped out at the last second. Still a great job there of causing disruption on the trick play. And now the Savage Storm going to have to regroup here. Looks like they're still going to go with the passing game, though there is a running back in the backfield as well. Pass across the middle this time. Kincaid is not throwing it. He's catching it. And five Hornet defenders there trying to rip the ball out of his hands. He does make the first down. Look back to Poole, by the way. Poole played... High school ball in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Picked up a couple of state championships in football there while he was there. And he was also a member of the basketball team, the track team, too. 
And you can see that leaping ability. You were talking about that. I mean, ball hawk, he can leap. One interception already, nearly had a second one there. Southeastern Storm offense on the move now with Hatley in the shotgun. Storm down to the Emporia State 31. Pass to Gray, and Gray gets behind a block, bounces off one. He's going to pick up the first down and fall into the red zone for Southeastern. Great job there by Gray adjusting to the play. He ran into a blocker there, it looked like, was able to bounce off. They're going to take another look. Just the short route here and trying to get the run after catch. Runs into a blocker, able to bounce off. And then you see here, Thomas just able to trip him up, always finding a way to tackle. I don't know exactly what his stats are up to this point, but he's nearing triple digits on the season, coming in with 92 tackles in this game. Led the way for Emporia State this year. Be a nice number to achieve this afternoon. Hit that century mark. Always good to hit a you know, triple digits in, in a positive stat if you can. High with the ball. Carries forward for a, about three. It's another linebacker making the play for Emporia State. That's Cade Harrelson. The linebacking core came to play today for Emporia State. It seems like they're in there on just about every play. If they're not making the tackle, they're making sure that one of the defensive linemen has an opportunity too by adding a little bit of extra pressure. That unit's really been a standout in this one, but just give credit to the complete defense for Emporia State. They've had everything going their way, but now Southeastern putting together perhaps their best drive of the game. Second and seven now for the Storm. Hatley, quick pass, screen pass to the right, pitch back, little hook and ladder look almost. And really, for all that went into that play, I think it's even going to pick up a yard. It was a play that was well designed, but the pitch back was so far back, it gave the opportunity for the defense to step up. And really, you'd think with a little trick play like that, you want to pick up more yards. Instead, I think they lose about a half yard on the play. So we'll see now what they draw up as you don't want to give any extra moments for the defense to be able to adjust and try to get towards the football. This team likes to swarm. The Hornets like to swarm, ironically. Hatley back with time, looks to the end zone. Kincaid thrown down before he got there, and that's going to bring the flag out. And Emporia State pleading its cause on defense, but the receiver was, well, thrown down. We're going to get another look at it here as Looks like Kincaid got tangled up a little bit here near the end zone, was unable to make the cut upfield that he wanted to. And Roderick Farmer, who was called for that penalty, is saying, hey, listen, the receiver, he just kept on going. Kincaid was going this direction. The ball was thrown behind him. What do you want from me? Instead, it is first down. Inside the three. Storm's best opportunity of the afternoon to put points on the board. An I formation now here for Southeastern. Hurt the back. The ball's on the ground. Emporia State, three white jerseys are there. And it's going to be another turnover as Emporia State will come away with the ball one more time in this one. Cade Harrelson picking it up for Emporia State. The redshirt senior out of Davenport, Oklahoma, pouncing on the ball that time. And just when you think Southeastern has something going their way, it looked like they were about to hit pay dirt. Emporia State stands up and gets another turnover, third turnover of the first half for the Savage Storm. And wow, the Hornets, just everything going their way right now. This is a big afternoon. Folks in Emporia have to be enjoying that. A number of folks from Emporia have made the trip down to be here today in Texarkana, and they are definitely getting their money's worth here today at Razorback Stadium. Gleason, back at the helm once again. And the give. And stutter step, cutting back to the inside. Nice run that time by Emporia State. Brooks with the carry. And Kanan Brooks is really the second running back that we see in that multi-running back setup for the Hornets. He's second on the team in rushing. Slung down behind the line this time, a loss of two. 
bring up third and six. A very manageable six. Just Emporia State continuing to roll. That high up tempo offense. And with a quarterback like Kincaid back there to be able to run this and, and run it so effectively and smoothly, it's just really something impressive to watch. Pass across the middle. Trying to find Amos across the middle, can't do it. Crowd wanted a flag on that one, saying that Amos was draped by a southeastern defender. Probably not going to get that there. Timed pretty closely. And fourth down. And we see today that Emporia State has a punting unit. Go figure. And if you can believe this, this is actually the first punt of the ball game for either team. Every time that Emporia State's gotten the ball back, it's either been on a turnover on downs or just a plain turnover. Ross Brungart to kick. And the punt will go take a roll past the 30. And that punt will be touched down the 26 yard line. Southeastern had a great opportunity on its last possession, could not convert, and the ball, another turnover, recovered in the end zone. Defense holds, but the offense is going to have an opportunity once again. And Chase, if, if you're Southeastern, you look at this right now, and what, what do you say? Well, we've been able to move it somewhat. There's been some success. There are some things that are going right. Just have to hang on to the ball. Ball security is going to be key in this one because I think, you know, if you're on the Southeastern coaching staff, you got to say, guys, we're doing a lot of things right. We're moving the ball down the field. It's just we're making the mistakes in those crucial moments. We've got a chance to capitalize. We either can't get that yardage or we've just lost the ball at this point. We've seen Southeastern get into the red zone or near the red zone twice in this one, and it's resulted in a turnover once and a turnover on downs the other time. Credit Emporia State for being staunch on defense and creating that disruption, allowing for the turnovers. But Southeastern's execution, if they want to get back into this ballgame, it's going to have to improve down near the goal line. You know, we talked about Emporia State and the, and the season that the Hornets have had, 8-3 and three on the year. Open things up with a win against Northwestern State and a loss in week two to Central Oklahoma. New coaching staff there in Edmond and looking to turn things around. That might have been a surprise for Emporia State come back get the win the next week against Missouri Western then is that one point loss at home to Pitt State and that one was a huge one Emporia State two and two on the year and might be reeling a little bit there in the month of September but then turn things around wins at Washburn against Central Missouri against a very tough Nebraska Kearney team at Missouri Southern Fort Hayes at Lincoln coming into the last week of the season eight and two on the year and Virtually a playoff game, if you will, a play-in game to get to the playoffs against Northwest Missouri. And, and uh, that one's at home, 27-21. You talked about it a little bit earlier. Came down that last possession, just couldn't punch it in uh, against uh, Northwest Missouri in that game. The Bearcats advanced the playoffs. But Emporia State making a statement here in the postseason. Up 28-0. Hatley rolling out and throws to the southeastern sideline. And you mentioned that Northwest Missouri State. What's interesting about that game is that Northwest Missouri State had a bit of a slow start to the year, too. They lost two games early in conference play, but they bounced back and won out the remainder of their schedule. That game really, if you look at how that last possession goes, it could be Emporia State that we had seen in the playoffs, and we may have seen Northwest Missouri State here today, but the Bearcats did come out on top, and a great showing for the MIAA in the playoffs is in the first round, the Bearcats with a stunner at Cliff Harris Stadium against Washita Baptist beating them by 30 points in the first round. That was a Washita team that had come in unscathed. And it's a huge win for Northwest Missouri. Getting that first round win, uh, falling the next week, and then of course the quarterfinals here in Super Region 2. A uh, big, big matchup. Ferris State, the defending champion, taking on Grand Valley State, who gave Ferris State its only loss this year. So that's uh, going else, elsewhere today. MIAA well represented, and they always are uh, in football. What an incredible football conference this is. Southeastern looking at third and long right here against this tough defense, and Emporia State showing blitz. Clock running down. Hatley looking for Gray, has him across the middle. Catch is made for the first down. 
And he'll pick up uh, out to the 44-yard line, a gain of about 15. Gray is the man that you want to get the ball to on those late down situations, as he's done all season long, running an excellent route and then a nice run after catch as well to extend well beyond that first down marker. Great gain there for the first team all GAC wide receiver. That's what you want to try to take advantage of again if everyone's coming through on the blitz right there. Might be an opening for Gray. And passes out to Kincaid. Slung around out of bounds, and that will draw the ire of the official and flags coming in from more than one direction. This has been a physical game between the two teams. We've seen some shoving between snaps, too, at the line of scrimmage following penalties. So it's like we may see the referees crack down on that a little bit here as this game goes along. It can be frustrating when you're down this much in a ball game like this late in the season. Both teams' tensions are high. They're wanting to play their best football to end the season. But this time, Emporia State's the one that's going to make the mistake. It's going to be an automatic first down for Southeastern. Another face mask and another time when Kincaid's helmet was caused to come off and he's not going to have to go sit down. Second time in one game when we see Montrell Wilson here after the penalty. Face mask there and pretty good distance out of bounds as well too. If you're Emporia State at this point, you don't want the little penalties like that. I mean, it winds up being 15 yards in the first down, but you've got Southeastern exactly where you want them here in the first half. Don't draw the, the flags for something like that that is, I mean, that's something that's on, on your side. You can handle that. You can control that. Something within your control. Hatley looking to his right. There's Gray once again. Gets past one. Defender 20 to the 15-10. Hornets closing in, and Gray will be tackled before he slides past the goal line. Down at the one-yard line, a huge play for Southeastern. We're going to take another look at it here. Great job by Gray. It's a short route. He made a great spin move. Don't know if we're going to have the replay of that. Here it is. We're going to get another look right here. Just throwing to the right side here in the flats. Great spin move by Gray, and there was really nobody ahead of him. The Hornets had to catch up to him to bring him down from behind, and he was brought down just shy of the goal line, but best field position of the day for Southeastern so far. Southeastern was in an I formation earlier, fumbled it last opportunity this close. And there is the pitch back end around. Great play in for the touchdown. The tight end for Southeastern. Matt Nunez gets in on the action. A little bit of a misdirection there. The eye formation, the look, and Nunez comes around on the end around for the score. Watch this here. Just a little fake, little give. And Nunez all by himself. Far left side of the end zone. Nunez was lined up as the fullback that time. Looked like a blocking back as well. Maybe they were going to try to go into I formation and either run it to the right side or right up the gut. But they just hand it off to Nunez. He runs to the left side. There's nobody guarding the end zone on that side. And he's in for an easy six points. One after is good. Southeastern is on the board for the first time today. Late here in the second quarter. Trailing now by only 21. The 2022 edition of the Live United Bowl here on the GAC Sports Network. You want an education that's going to take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Here's to the fearless fight, the comeback, the battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path. Southeastern kicks off today for the first time in Emporia State. A nice return, getting it all the way back to the 40-yard line. Billy Ross, Jr. And that was Trey Keats that kicked the ball away for Southeastern. First time we've seen him today. The last time he took the field before that kickoff, he was kicking a game winner for the Savage Storm a year ago in that 37-34 instant classic, one of the best Live United Bowls we've ever seen. 
It really was. It's uh, many of them seem to uh, be more than a three-point contest. And right now, this one is not a three-point contest. It is all Emporia State right now. Little shovel pass forward, pushing that through. And Thomas gets around and will come close to a first down. I think they're going to say he was down just about the 48, so nine on the carry for Thomas. Great job there by Thomas getting to the outside. As it was good coverage up front. If he had run straight to the teeth of the defense, probably would have been brought down in the backfield, but kept trying to get to the outside and ended up getting some really good yardage as a result. You're gonna, that will be a reception for Thomas as it was a very short forward pass. Enough for the first down there on that pass and catch. Tyler Common will be the recipient of the pass from Gleason there. They'll get back to the line quickly and get things set once again. You look at all these receivers, though, for or Emporia State. Six, we said, with at least 300 yards receiving. Six with at least 30 catches on the year. And Ross bursts through the middle for a first down. Ross getting some great support that time from his offensive line. Opened up a hole up the middle, and he just took advantage for another first down. And the give to Ross again. Emporia State mixing things up here a little bit. Ross has a gain of one, but why not uh, take a little time off the clock here and, and work toward that east end zone? Ross will come out now. It'll be Brooks in his place in the backfield along with Gleason. Also coming in is Calvin Voice, Voice and Case Cochran. He's also in for the Hornets. The gives to Brooks up the middle. Gain of two, third and seven on the way. And when you got multiple running backs like that, that's exactly what you can do. You can try and wear down the defense with both. When one gets tired, you have a fresh set of legs to run in there. Brooks that time getting a couple of extra yards and making this a more manageable third down situation for the Hornets. I'll tell you what, the way they've been playing today, I think anything's manageable right now. It doesn't matter where they are on the field. The Hornets offense has been so good. Quick pitch to the outside and Hustling forward, getting around two or three defenders that time. Great job by Varner. And Jalen Varner, well, yeah, that, that was managed. Third and seven, he made it look easy. And that was not an easy play. You see the footwork there on that last play as Emporia State trying to go up tempo here. And we have a timeout called by the Savage Storm. And the defense could not get off the field quickly enough there. There were at least 13 men on the field, may have been 14 by the time that the snap came to Gleason. Look at the footwork here though from Varner on that last play. Step off to the right side and able to make a couple of defenders miss there before getting the first down. That's gonna be a good momentum booster there for the Hornets going into this timeout break. Storm now trying to, to get things together on defense and, and just hold on for a little bit right now. You know these, these Hornets too. I mean, uh, talk about what's been done today already for, for uh, Emporia State. We've talked about the fact that, that Gleason now has 30 touchdowns on the season to go with his now 3,200 yards passing. I mean, that's, that's a nice, nice way to end the season. Not one that he's going to complain about. That's one to write home about for sure. And you're really seeing why Gleason was a Harlan Hill candidate, didn't make it to that final edge of voting, but he's had a fine season and he's done a great job of connecting with his receivers. You can really see the chemistry on display every time he throws the ball. First and 10 now, Gleason 12 for 17 passing, rolling out, trying to find someone. Deep ball's tipped, and Ross in the end zone can't bring it in. And uh, you know, some of the fans say, listen, he was interfered with. That ball was tipped, so it's a, it's not going to be pass interference when the defender's over the back right there as Keelan Chilton was. Second and 10 now for Gleason. There is the give. Brooks get down to close to the 20. They're going to give him the 20-yard line now and third and seven once again for Emporia State. Talked about Gleason, 12 for 17 passing, now 12 for 18. Varner with three receptions and two uh, touchdown catch. Uh, Thomas, five receptions on the day. Schumacher, the pair of receptions, and Common with the pair of receptions as well. Tackle made by Micah Rogers, the second. That'll bring up a third down, fourth down, excuse me. You've talked about the combination of Thomas and Varner. That's really been 
the setup that we've seen from the Hornets all season long. You see Thomas with a lot more yards in the open field, but when it gets down close to the goal line, that's where you start to see Varner really start to play a role. He leads the team in touchdowns, as we mentioned, up to double digits on the year with 10. And now Emporia State is going to have a chance to kick its first field goal of the game. This will be about a 32-yarder. Hayden Dotson to attempt that. He's four for four on extra point attempts. He is one for one now on field goals as well. Emporia State extends its lead. 31-7 our score here from Texarkana. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles, delivering compassionate care, along with leading-edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. Dotson now eight for nine on the year in field goals. Dottis to kick off for Emporia State. A 24 point advantage. Three minutes remaining here in the first half. That one taken at the six yard line. Changing direction southeastern with a little bit of momentum that time. And Caleb Whitley will make it to midfield. Just into Emporia State territory. Whitley had a couple of opportunities earlier. This one able to uh, find a seam and opening on the left side and up past midfield. Southeastern now with less than three minutes remaining here in the first half. You think the Storm will want to put more points on the board before they go to the break. And I think we will see the four-minute offense now, especially with the great field position. As you see all the great blocks here for Southeastern getting to the outside. And we've really seen Emporia State dominate in every facet of the game, but a standout play there for Southeastern that hopefully for them will translate on the offensive side of things. They're looking to roll off the momentum of the touchdown they got the last time out. We'll see if that opens up the floodgates going into the remainder of the first half and into the second half. Hatley, Hatley's quick pass to Deuce Pittman. Pittman. On the sideline, stop the clock over there. A hurry up look to this offense is what we'll likely see for Southeastern now. I don't think it's going to match the pace of what the Hornets have done on offense, but need to make things happen quickly. Atley down the field high and over the hands of the intended target of Ken Page. White jerseys back there as well. That could easily have been another turnover. If the Hornets had been playing a little bit further back, I think that would have resulted in a turnover for Emporia State, not what Southeastern's open for here. As you see, Hatley looking for Kincaid over the middle of that time, sailed on him a bit, and a couple of Hornet, Hornets looming, looming there. Was a little bit of movement there on the defensive line, but got back. Nothing doing. Didn't cause the southeastern line to flinch. And Hadley with third and six now for the storm. Checked down three times, looking for anybody able to get the pass across the middle. And catch made by Wu. The final option on the check down there, and it's enough to pick up the first down. Allen doing a great job there of taking what the defense gave him. Looks like we'll have a brief stoppage here. Both teams will get a chance to catch their breath a bit here on what's been a fast paced start to the drive. Southeastern looking to cap it off with a score here. Now on the edges of field goal range, getting closer and closer, but I know that they're going to try to go to the end zone. I definitely need to put six points on the board. Past the two-minute mark now. And the clock is ticking here in this first half. Hatley looking to his left, throws to his left, and that ball batted away. Hatley's best attempt to Almost intercepted by number 19, Robert Farmer. Coming up with the play that time Second. for Emporia State was the safety, Derek Maxwell. Maxwell's had a great season and 
that time goes up and almost makes an interception play for himself. He looked almost like the intended target on that one, reached up there like a wide receiver, unable to come down with it, but still, petty defensive play there. Second and long now for Southeastern. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. Get off the block! You know, for as many turnovers, or turnovers as Emporia State's caused, they've had even more opportunities, and Hatley is in trouble and will eventually go down. Harrelson with another tackle for loss, a sack this time. He's in the backfield. He has created all kinds of havoc there for the storm in the backfield. Tell you what, the pressure there between Williams and Harrelson has just been so big today for Emporia State. He's got a turnover to his credit. He's been making tackles in the backfield. Again, one of these linebackers from Emporia State that does it all following the example of the second team all region selection, super region selection, Dawson James. Pittman with the catch, and he'll make it back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be fourth and ten now for Southeastern. Obviously four down territory here as the first half is winding down. Uh, Southeastern opportunity. We're going to let the time tick, tick, tick away. Have a timeout if they want to use it. I'm just content to let the clock run here. You know, there, there, there is a thought that you want to get out of this first half and get to half. And Emporia State's going to call a timeout. Now that's interesting. We're going to take with them and said you. Don't know if you want to get through this first half and get to the break and stop the bleeding if you can, but Emporia State calls the timeout. So fourth and 10 on the way when we come back here on the GAC Sports Network. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people, matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. Emporia State decided to call a time out there, so Coach Higgins, if with a defensive stop here, gives his team an opportunity maybe to do something else before the break. We'll see. For Southeastern, though, uh, you know, there is the, that school of thought. You would just get to, the, get to the locker room. I mean, it's been a rough first half. Get that behind you. They let the clock tick down, but it is still fourth down. So maybe an opportunity to get it close and see if Trey Keats can put one through or possibly go for the end zone right here. You know that the Savage Storm will have their eye on that first down marker and with this much distance to cover, if they've got a man downfield they think can bring it in, they may just try to go for it all, go for the touchdown right here. Southeastern needing to make it to the 23-yard line. Hatley rolls out, flushed out, throws back over his body deep. Kincaid is near the goal line, and the flags come out. It will be pass interference. And for Emporia State, one more time, it, down deep there picking up that, that, that penalty was Roderick Farmer. He's had a tough assignment today against Ken Cade, and now second time this afternoon he's been called for pass interference, and you'll see it again here. A lot of contact here, and Ken Cade goes all the way down to the ground, so looks like that was a good call there. A little jersey pull, too. Just a little bit. So 15 yards on the penalty. And Southeastern with new life. Didn't have to call that last time out. They still have two here with less than 20 seconds remaining here at the 18 yard line. Hadley has Wu behind him or beside him with receivers to his right. He looks quickly to his right. That ball tipped and picked off at the 15. Pass the 20, Gray's going to try to strip it. He can't do it. And an interception that time for Montrell Wilson. And Wilson takes it past midfield. And now Emporia State with 9.2 seconds left in the first half has the ball and has Gleason in its backfield. 
And you got to think with those odds, they're going to try and take a shot downfield here. If not to, for the full score, try to get in field goal range. Here you see again, just a great read. Never saw Wilson come in that time. And Wilson, he just takes the ball away from Gray, a very talented wide receiver for Southeastern as he runs the length of the left sideline, finally being taken down near the 47 of Southeastern. Wilson just ripped it away. I mean, he just went up and, and uh, determined he was the stronger of the two, and in that time, he was, no doubt. Gleason with four wide, two to either side, 9.2 seconds on the clock from the 47-yard line, fires across the middle, catch is made, and Hornets go down quickly and call a timeout. Schumacher with a catch, his third of the afternoon. There's a penalty flag down at the end of the play. Well, Emporia State made up about half the distance to the end zone, but that one's going to come back, unfortunately, for the Hornets off the holding penalty. And five of those seconds ticked off, so 4.2 remaining. That was the game plan there. Make up at least half the distance if you can. Maybe you can take another shot for the end zone. Maybe you attempt a long field goal opportunity. Coach Higgins is less than pleased about that call on the sideline. And the Savage Storm didn't like what they saw right there. There were two men wide on both sides. They want to talk things over here prior to the last play of the half. Well, Chase, this is a halftime that uh, both teams seem to be hesitant to get to right now. You think if you're Southeastern, you want to get there quickly and sort things out and stop the bleeding. Uh, Emporia State probably would want to just go ahead and keep on playing. Get the other two quarters going on right now because you have all the momentum on your side. Everything has been going right other than that one holding call just now. I think that's probably been the one thing you look back. Well, a couple of pass interference calls, but still, even when Southeastern's gotten it close, the defense has really just uh, not given up, and you see that again with a near pick six from Wilson. And in the postseason, turnovers are crucial. You've got to secure the ball, and it's not been the case for Southeastern here today. Four first-half turnovers, two on the ground and two through the air, not to mention the turnover on downs that was caused on the first drive of the game. It's just been a tough going for the Savage Storm here in the first half. They'll have some adjustments to make going into the break. First and 20 off the hold, and the give inside is to Ross. He'll make it back to the Razorback in the middle of Razorback Stadium, and that's where he'll go down. But his team has a 24-point advantage, and a little bit of uh, frustration being expressed now at midfield. So the clock has run down to zeros. But the teams are still going at one another here. And the coaching staff for both sides say, hey, guys, get to the locker room. 30 more minutes to play here at Texarkana. Michael Hookfin for Southeastern has been called for the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. He has been ejected, so he won't be at back out in uniform in the second half of Southeastern. And as we were saying, Emporia State takes a 24-point lead to the break. We will take the break as well. The 2022 Live United Bowl here in Texarkana on the GAC Sports Network. Back in a moment. At Slepco, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. Here's to the fearless fight. The comeback. The battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path, a chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. 
and with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. There's a place I'm welcome in. There's a place I know I'm called a friend. There's a place that I'm never alone. There's a place called home. A place called home. Come home to Farmers Bank. State with a 24-point advantage over Southeastern here, and the first half has been all Hornets all the time. Jordan Williams along with Chase Hartzell here from Texarkana. A big afternoon as the Emporia State Band has taken the field here. Talk about all the things that have gone on here and what a big deal it is for uh, this Live United Bowl over the course of the years. Uh, and more than $100,000 have been raised for the Live United, or excuse me, for the United Way in the Texarkana area. More than 100009 And a lot of these things come from the, the Jeans and Boots Barbecue Banquet that is held on Friday night. Each time, folks coming in, uh, they celebrate with their respective teams each year. Uh, at least one Great American Conference team that comes in. And, and uh, from the... MIAA and the Lone Star Conference as well. Teams coming in, their fans support. They come out and, and uh, they, they bring a lot of money, spend that money, get some good food along the way, and they support a fantastic cause. And what a great cause this is here for the Live United Bowl and also just for the city of Texarkana in general. There was an interview earlier last year with one of the city council members talking about how much of an economic impact that this event has for Texarkana as well, not only for Live United, a, another great cause, but also for all the businesses downtown, all the, all around town, really, for Texarkana, you start to see people staying in hotels. You see people eating good food from the local food, including the banquet food last night. And really just a great opportunity for Texarkana to, to show off what a great community they have here in southwest Arkansas. Glad to get to be here in Texarkana today. And Emporia State is uh, really enjoying the visit right now. Up 24 at the half. We'll be back in a moment here on the GAC Sports Network. And we're back for the Nukes MVP. For only $9.99, these picks really stand out. Yeah, the buffalo chicken sandwich, a real contender. Frank's red hot sauce, celery, carrots, cheese, and ranch. Mmm, so much sauce, Bob. And the buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, just look at that for me. That cheese pull is just impeccable. For the chili taco salad, they put everything into this place. Just look at that drizzle. And at this price, it's tough to pick just one. You're right, Larry. I'd try all three. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. You want an education that's gonna take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, 
and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. The Emporia State Band performing quite well here at halftime in Razorback Stadium. Southeastern's band is uh, getting ready to take the field here in just a moment. And we, we, we just said over and over it's been the Hornets' day. But if you look at some of the statistics right now, Chase, I mean, it, it might paint a different picture as Southeastern's run 46 plays, 218 yards they've amassed. Emporia State's offense, just 30 plays, 187 offense. So the total yardage goes in the direction of Southeastern. Time of possession, almost two to one for Southeastern. They've hung on to the, if they could have just hung on to the ball, you'd think it might be a different story, but they're doing a lot of things right. Emporia State's just capitalizing. That's right, and you look at the turnover category, that's what really matters. There were four turnovers in the first half, five turnovers actually for Southeastern in that one, plus you add on to a turnover on downs. And for Emporia State, they did a great job of holding on to the ball. They did have one punt in the, in the first half there, but did a great job on defense, creating those turnovers and creating short fields for the offense to go out and operate. And when the offense went out and operated, they were very efficient. Now you saw Gleason throw it to Varner right there. See him down the field again. There's Varner, another touchdown. He has two here in the first half. And there's one of those turnovers picked up. Declan Hobb decides he's gonna just go ahead and take this one to the house himself. He doesn't need everybody else. Don't worry about this, Gleason. I've got this touchdown made, his first Fumble recovery for a touchdown of the season. There is another interception, and Hatley is flushed out. Ball's on the turf again. This time it's Williams to come away with it. And, you know, three fumble recoveries to go with two interceptions. Oh, and simply the fact that you've got uh, one of the best quarterbacks in Division II right there throwing the ball as well. Southeastern finally with a score, able to get something. Little, little end around coming off that uh, I formation there. But how about this? Wilson with the final turnover of the first half. May not be the final turnover in the game, but it's the final one of the first half. Nice job by Southeastern as uh, Cottrell Blakely trying to make something happen just before the break, but didn't, didn't work out. Southeastern trailing by 24 here, and that's where the score stands as we take a break here on the GAC Sports Network. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. You want an education that's gonna take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Here's to the fearless fight. The comeback. The battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path, a chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield live fearless. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things at Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles. Delivering compassionate care, along with leading-edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. A strong work ethic 
takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. There's a place I'm welcome in. There's a place I know I'm called a friend. There's a place that I'm never alone. There's a place called home. Come home to Farmer's Bank. And we're back for the Nukes MVP. For only $9.99, these picks really stand out. Yeah, the buffalo chicken sandwich, a real contender. Frank's red hot sauce, celery, carrots, cheese, and ranch. Mm. So much sauce, Bob. And the buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, just look at that for me. That cheese pull is just impeccable. For the chili taco salad, they put everything into this plate. Just look at that drizzle. And at this price, it's tough to pick just one. You're right, Larry. I'd try all three. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. You want an education that's going to take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Here's to the fearless fight, the comeback, the battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path, a chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield live fearless. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles. Delivering compassionate care along with leading edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. No matter your season of life, no matter your banking needs, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. There's a place I'm welcome in. There's a place I know I'm called a friend. There's a place that I'm never alone. There's a place called home. A place called home. Come home to Farmers Bank. 
And we're back for the Nukes MVP. For only $9.99, these picks really stand out. Yeah, the buffalo chicken sandwich, a real contender. Frank's red hot sauce, celery, carrots, cheese, and ranch. Mm. So much sauce, Bob. And the buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah, just look at that for me. That cheese pull is just impeccable. For the chili taco salad, they put everything into this plate. Just look at that drizzle. And at this price, it's tough to pick just one. You're right, Larry. I'd try all three. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. At SWEPCO, our commitment to you extends beyond our mission to provide safe, reliable, and affordable energy. We believe in being a part of the community. We empower the next generation of workers through financial support of STEM education, hands-on training, and mentorship. We are always ready to lend a hand, whether on or off the job. Our customer care specialists are available around the clock to answer your questions. And our entire team works every day to keep the lights on. Whether we are working to power homes or communities, our energy to help people live better lives and build brighter futures is boundless. You want an education that's going to take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Here's to the fearless fight. The comeback. The battle against all odds. For some, it's taking the first step. For others, it's forging a new path, a chance to prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And with the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years, even a battered spirit can come back stronger. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield, live fearless. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles, delivering compassionate care, along with leading-edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. Emporia State. Been a, the Hornets' nest uh, south, I guess, is what you could call it right here. Razorback Stadium has been just that. And somebody poked that nest, I guess, before this game started because these Hornets came out and they were angry. They got off to a 31-7 lead in the first 30 minutes of this game. Jason? Well, I think Southeastern poked the nest a little bit last year, and this has just been the first opportunity that Emporia State has been able to get them and sting back. But... Wow, what a first half. The Hornets creating five turnovers key in that first half. Defense creating a lot of opportunities for the offense. And then when you have a quarterback like Gleason who can go out there and pretty much have his way on the field and have a great wide receiving core to support him, 
things are going to go well, and that's been the case so far for Emporia State. They've shown why they were a team that was in playoff consideration for most of the year and just missed out. Just missed out indeed, but they are making a show for it here. And this is a, an Emporia State program, by the way. Again, four and three all time in postseason bowl history, trying to make it five and three today. 30 more minutes of game time yet to be played here in Texarkana. But uh, for the Hornets, another opportunity coming out here in the second half. They're going to get a chance to have Gleason on the field first. And you talked about the quality of the MIAA too. Over the last 12 years since since 20, or excuse me, over the last 10 years since 2012, in terms of postseason appearances, Emporia State is second in the MIAA with seven appearances, three in the playoffs. This is their fourth bowl game appearance. They're tied for first in bowl game appearances and their second in playoff appearances behind Northwest Missouri State, who made its 10th run <laughs> in a row just this last year. Fair catch called for. Emporia State will get it at the 41-yard line. And, well, that's just 59 yards that Gleason has to an opportunity to lead this team here in the third quarter. And that personal foul really coming back to play a role here as Emporia State, you don't want to give them even more advantage than they already have. And Gleason is not afraid to work with a longer field, but here he's going to get a shorter field to work with. And we'll see if he airs it out. They go more to the ground to start out the half. And we do uh, recall that personal foul and the unsportsmanlike penalty right at the break. It backed Southeastern up for the kick there, and that was going against Michael Hookfin for Southeastern. He was ejected. He will not be back in the second half of this game for the Storm. And it's kind of one of those things for Southeastern. It's almost an all-hands-on-deck right now. Somebody's got to step up to make something happen here in the second half. They're going to have to do it on the defensive side of the ball first as Emporia State and Braden Gleason are out. Gleason fires over to his right. The catch is made by Thomas on the sideline and pick up seven on the catch. Maybe five. And I think I was right originally with seven there. Give us to Brooks. Brooks trying to push forward. He's going to be close to the first down, but I think a wave of blue will keep him from making that first down. We'll see where they spot it here. It's going to be close. Looks like they're going to mark him about a yai or about a yard short, and they're just going to hurry up to the line and try to get the conversion themselves. And the push will be enough. First down, Emporia State. How about that? The hurry up offense, and it was uh, took an extra gear of hurry up there. Got up there and. Didn't allow the Southeastern defense an opportunity to get set. That's right. Southeastern really wasn't in position quite yet, and that allowed Gleason to sneak through for the first down, though there was a bit of resistance at the line. Gleason finds Vaughn close to the first down. He'll pick up at least eight. And you know, Chase, that's one of those things, too. That's something that comes in from the sideline quickly. You have to be prepared on that. You know you're going you're gonna to take that quick uh, fourth down opportunity. Gleason with the pump fake now looks down the field, has a man open and the catch is made in for the score just like that. Emporia State has scored once again. 37 points on the board as Tyler Common picks up another touchdown this season. For Common, it is his ninth. And that time a little bit of hesitation on the play action pass as you see right here, setting up for the run and then just throwing it downfield. Common got just enough space to streak into the open field over the middle. And Gleason put the ball right where it needed to be for the score. What a game it has been for him. As Emporia State just pouring it on here. Dotson with an extra point. And Emporia State totals seven more on the board. Just a minute 44 off the clock here in the second half. And the Emporia State Hornets are rolling here in Texarkana. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you.
You want an education that's going to take you places. To know that your instructors are going to support you when the work gets hard and cheer you on when you succeed. You want programs that fit with your busy life, challenge you, and put you on the path to the career you've always wanted. And you want to stay out of debt. At UAHT, you can. Passing the competition by leaps and bounds and getting patients back into the swing of things. At Christus St. Michael Health System, our team of world-class specialists are experts in caring for bones, joints, and muscles, delivering compassionate care along with leading-edge technology for the diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of injuries and chronic conditions. Christus St. Michael Health System, taking orthopedic care a step further. A strong work ethic takes pride in a job well done. This is the kind of person you need. Express Employment Professionals can help because we understand what it takes to hire good people. It takes real people, real interviews. We find good people matching the right skills for the right jobs. Express knows jobs. Get to know Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find a location near you. Southeastern looking to try to uh, climb out of a hole that's gotten to be a little bit deeper here as the second half gets underway. Jordan Williams along with Chase Hartzell here in Texarkana as Emporia State put seven more points on the board to go with the 31 they had in the first half. And this will go into the end zone. Emporia State's 31 points is tied for the most in Olive United Bowl first half, second most in any half in this bowl's history. But you have to go back, let's go back five years as uh, Arkansas Tech had scored 31 points in that first half in 2017, taking on Pitt State, another MIAA school, by the way. We talked about them that uh, gave Emporia State some fits a little bit earlier this year. Arkansas Tech had scored 31 in the first half. Pitt State answered with 34 in the second half of that game. Southeastern has the opportunity to try to match that feat, but they've already spotted Emporia State another seven here in the second half. So Hatley has some work to do. And the give inside, a pickup of seven for the Storm as they're trying to make something happen here. The Savage Storm is certainly trying to make lightning strike twice here. After giving up the score, they're going to be set back a little bit, but that's a good first play from scrimmage for the offense. Able to establish the run a little bit more. We'll see if they can continue that trend here. They struggled with a bit in the first half, and Poirier State did a great job of containing up the middle. Atley for the second and four. Give to Wu. Outside, flag comes down at the end of the play. Possibly going to be a face mask here. Oh, no, it will not. Holding. So Southeastern will be moving backwards once again here. After what was a decent gain, we're going to move this one back, and so it's going to be second and 14 now for the Storm. Anytime you, you want to try to make a comeback, you have to start somewhere. Southeastern, this is his first possession here in the second half. You get a chance to start to try to cut into what was a 24-point lead then, but it's already expanded a little bit more, so it's a tough road to climb now for the Storm. Pass, that would look like it may have almost been on the turf, picked up and taken past uh, the original line of scrimmage by Whitley. It's a dangerous pass, too, almost a backward pass there. It's close. You, even if it was near the turf and it's close, you have to go ahead and try to make that catch there because you can't just assume anything. We're going to see it here. Did a great job. That one was heading straight for the dirt, but he's able to scoop it up and pull it in. And that, that does wind up being a good completed pass, but you know, one, anything like that's dangerous. If it if it's, looks like it's going to be a lateral or backwards, it doesn't matter if it's close to the turf or not. You've got to make that grab there, and you can't just give an easy opportunity to the other team. Especially after surrendering five turnovers already in this game. Exactly. 
They're a minus five on the turnover spot, looking for Kincaid to cross the middle. Catch is made, and that is uh, enough for the first down. By the way, Braxton Kincaid uh, in the first half moved up the list, in Southeastern's uh, receiving list, and the number four all time in receiving yards for the Southeastern Savage Storm. And along the way, uh, Dalton Hotley, Hatley, excuse me, uh, moved up the list as well for Southeastern on the all-time list passing yards. And he is now number one all-time, passing Cade Mosier, the great Cade Mosier at Southeastern. Dalton Hatley now the all-time leader in passing yards. You almost have to expect something like that from the quarterback who's had back-to-back -back seasons of 3,000 yards passing. It's been an incredible career for Hatley. And I know he was hoping for a stronger finish to this year here today. Still plenty of time to try and bounce back, but his team just finding themselves in spots they don't want to be. He surrendered two uncharacteristic interceptions in this game as well, thanks to some great coverage from Emporia State. So though his connections with Kincaid have been really one of the strong points for the Savage Storm here up to this point in the contest. 30 touchdowns on the season now for Gleason. Hatley has 29. He'd like to get a 30th if he could. Pittman with the catch, and that should be enough for a first down for Southeastern. And Pittman has quietly been racking up the receptions in this game. He's run more of the shorter routes over the middle or to the outsides, but he's been very effective in getting Southeastern closer to the first down sticks, this time picking up the first down and moving the sticks. You know, these are two teams, by the way, that have a number of players that are back from last year's game. Not only uh, the, the teams themselves, but the individual players on this team and these two teams. Little reverse going the other way. Whitley has nowhere to go, and he's brought down. Tackled for loss in the backfield. And Jordan Williams, who already has a fumble recovery to his credit and much pressure, is just making himself at home in Southeastern's backfield. That time a tackle for loss of about six. We're going to take another look at it here. Double reverse, but it backfires as he runs right into Williams. Williams, the block just kind of dissipated there, and he ran straight into the defender. It was it was, uh, it was was Hatley trying to make that block. He's he's not going to present too big a target there. He needs to make that, uh, as they used to say with Peyton Manning when he was a quarterback, he made a business decision there. So decided not to get too much in the way of Williams. He wanted to keep his prospects of playing the rest of this game alive. We have such a tough defender coming off of the right edge. He's been giving Hatley fits throughout the day and that time disrupting the, the rushing game. But now he's going to be more than likely in hot pursuit here in the passing game as Hatley almost undoubtedly going to have to throw the ball downfield here on third and long. And one of the balls that was used to uh, work on punting bounced onto the field. So that, that was the stoppage in play right there. Southeastern to possibly have to punt here unless he can pick up 16 on third down. Need to get down to the Emporia State 29-yard line. Linebacker showing blitz. Atley has time, steps into it, looking for Gray down the field. Is able to get the catch through and into the two-yard line. A fantastic pass and catch by Hatley to Gray. It's a connection that's been made a number of times this season. And Southeastern in position once again. Try to make something happen inside the five-yard line. Take another look here. Great throw by Hatley resisting the pressure as there was a little bit of a blitz there from Emporia State and Marquise Gray. He was facing a little bit of contact even before the ball got there, but able to shake it off and make a great catch. 43 yards on that pass by Hadley to Gray. As High in the backfield with him, and the give is to High. And he'll be close, but he won't be there. Gain of one. So High made up half the distance that he needed to. It'll be second and goal now from the one. Southeastern wanting to avoid a situation like they had earlier in the game where they fumbled the ball. Though they did have a little bit of an amend to that in the, in the next drive as they were able to get the fullback really 
It was a fake there as it looked like they were going in I formation trying to get it to the tailback. Ended up passing it to, the, or excuse me, hanging it off to the fullback. And there again, I formation now high, and Hurt will dot that I. The pitch back to Hurt tries to find blockers. He will not. And there are about nine white jerseys in the vicinity of where Hurt went down. We're going to give the credit unofficially to Harrelson on the tackle, but he wasn't alone. Loss of three on the play. Third and goal now from the four. Well, now the, the heavy package will leave the field and the wide receivers coming back as they've got about five yards to go to try and get the score. So now maybe we'll see Hatley throw it through the air here. He does have one turnover through the air in the red zone, looking for his first touchdown still. That was Wilson one-on-one -on -one coverage with Gray, and that's the matchup we see on the right side of the field for Southeastern right now. Hatley looks to his left. Now he's going to look back to his right, try to find an opening deep into the end zone. Way too high for Gray. Out of bounds. And fourth down is on the way now for Southeastern. And the Savage Storm need more points than just three. So the offense is going to stay on the field here for Coach Fenwick. It appears anyway. There is some personnel moving around. It looks like we'll see one substitution, but that's a receiver. It's going to stay on the field. <laughs> yes, coming onto the field now. Hurt in the backfield, and Hadley's under center now. Hadley will step back, quick pass, screen pass, bubble look over there. Nunez goes nowhere. In fact, he may have lost a yard. The Hornets' defense sniffed this one out. A flag flies after the fact. And Emporia State holds, but we wait to see what happens with the flag. And Dalton Hatley is waving over to the sideline saying to the defense, stay on the field, it's going against them. Not sure what the call is here, it's tough to say. It, it looked like it was after the fact. One of the Southeastern players was down. Well, gonna go for, uh, after the play, unfortunately, on uh, uh, defense number 43. And it was after the after the fact. One of the southeastern players was down, and it's unsportsmanlike contact or conduct against Emporia State. We'll take a break and we will sort this out for you in just a moment. In the meantime, Emporia State will in fact get the ball. It's turned over on downs. Back in a moment on GAC Sports Network. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform, they need to be the best. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs, that's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining. Moria State running with uh, trying to get out of the uh, shadow of their own goal line there, their goal post there. Stop on defense. And here we get a chance to look at this uh, this run one more time there. A pickup of maybe one, one and a half on the play. Incidentally, Dawson Hamas was the uh, player flagged for the unsportsmanlike conduct for Emporia State. Another carry on the ground. Pickup of a little bit more. And so the Hornets not 
too much of a hurry right now, but uh, they can afford to do so, Chase, because they've been able to get the ball back so many times. And when you're up by 31 at this point in the game, maybe trying to to wind down as much time as possible, though, now they're going to throw. Out of the play action, looking for his receiver on the Emporia State sideline. And it's incomplete, so it's fourth down now. And here comes the punting unit, something we haven't, again, seen that much of today. You know, we were talking during the break about the, the turnovers. And again, Southeastern now five turnovers officially, but that there are a couple more that, that won't show up in the stats. That's the turnover on downs. and. You look at the red zone efficiency, that's been another key stat for Southeastern, 25%, and definitely something that you don't want to see if you are the savage storm. You're always wanting to go in and put up some points when you're down there, but it's been tough sledding for Southeastern down there. And we've got a blocked punt, it looks like. That is that's going to be a touchdown. in the end zone. Touchdown, Southeastern. Wow. Oh, there's, there is a turnaround, and the first turnover going to Southeastern today results in six points in the storm on the board here. Wow. Get another look at that here in a moment. Southeastern, that is by far the biggest play of the day for the storm. Six points on the board. And Trey Keats out to try to make it seven right here. Actually, Dalton Hatley's out there with the offense. They're going to try. No, to they are too. That's exactly right. Hatley coming out. Well, you got to make up as many points as you possibly can. And an interesting look now for Southeastern. Kincaid lines up just off the line. Throw to Gray in the end zone. Double teamed. Gray can't quite come away with it. And. Um, I tell you, that's something you don't see every day from Southeastern. One of the linemen lining up, Stefan Zabi. Okay, we're going to look first off at, at the, uh, the blocked punt. It's a great job sneaking in. around the edge that time on the left side, just able to bat it down with a hand. Everybody was anticipating the ball going to the return man that time, but it was in the back of the end zone before anybody realized it. And that time, a defender pouncing on the ball. Actually, a special teams man for Southeastern is. Really, Joey, the, the special teams has been one of the strongest areas for the Savage Storm in this contest, creating six points of their own. By the way, watch lining up on the outside over here. Do you see big number 78? He's uh, the left tackle. He lined up as an eligible receiver and was asking for the ball on the pass. Maybe a decoy there, and still Gray got a double team. But Zabie was open. 6'6", 310-pound junior, left tackle. Keep that in mind maybe later on. We'll see if that comes into play a little bit later. But you just don't see number 78 lining up in any uniform in football as an eligible receiver. <laughs> there very often. Did right there, onside kick attempted, and... The ball is finally recovered by Emporia State. It's going to be the Hornets' ball. So a turnover there for Southeastern. That finally uh, goes from negative five to negative four there on the turnover battle. And the Storm trying to crawl out of this hole. And I don't think that Emporia State was anticipating the onside kick there as it came as a bit of surprise. Had to make an adjustment to get to the ball that time. Now Southeastern was lined up like they were going to kick it deep that time and ended up faking it a little bit slowed down towards the tee and then just rolled it forward. Almost got the ball back, but Emporia State will have good field position here for the next drive. A credit Chance Rodriguez, one of the up men for grabbing the ball and hanging on. Brooks on the carry and Brooks will pick up about a yard and a half for Emporia State. Clock continues to roll as Emporia State Keeps it on the ground there. Gleason now has a man in motion. That's Thomas. And Gleason with another give to Brooks. Brooks with another carry of about a yard and a half, so it'll bring up third and seven. And Chase, at this point, you know, again, the Hornets up 25 here. Do you, do you dance with the one that, that brought you? And, and keep on firing. We'll see. Gleason to 
to uh, Thomas there, and that's enough for the first down. Or you just try to get rid of some of this clock. And I think uh, right now we're seeing a little bit more of the clock being evaporated. And I think especially in those late down situations, you'll see more of going to the air. But Emporia State on first down. They're going to throw it here. Well, Gleason may have been thinking about it, but he slides, and they, they spot it where that slide started, a gain of only one. The offense hustles to get back into place here, get things going again. And now Brooks take the carry. And he moves forward for about uh, four on the carry, third and five on the way. Nice move there by Brooks right at the line of scrimmage. Looked like he may have been taken down at the line or maybe just behind it, and he ends up making a little bit of a juke move to the left side. It's a couple of extra yards, and there's a player down for Southeastern. Yeah, Alex Marshall, who made the tackle, is slow getting up now for the storm. And Marshall, a senior for Southeastern, been an integral part of the storm defense for a number of years now. And you hope that he's going to be okay here, but not looking too great as he goes back down. Don't want to leave your last game as a college player due to an injury. You're going to get him up. He'll walk off on, under his own power, and Emporia State gets an opportunity to just go over talk to the sideline for a moment and say, hey, listen, what are we going to run here? Third and five on the way. The clock stopped with the injury timeout there. A little bit more than four minutes remaining here in this third quarter. The sun has come out here once again in Texarkana. Now, there have been a, a couple of Live United Bowls in which the weather wasn't that good, but for the most part, it's it's generally very nice, very pleasant here in Texarkana, and the uh, Chamber of Commerce has to be excited about today's offering as well here. Beautiful day, the sun's out shining, not too hot. Warming up just a little bit here. Most folks are still in their cooler weather gear coming in. There's a lot of tailgating this morning to the east of the stadium and people from both teams celebrating. Gleason, oh, the first down and more stutter step and now he's gonna go down. Didn't slide in, so Southeastern with an opportunity to wrap him up there. He touched at the 25, good run for Gleason. Gleason made the perfect read and looks like the Horns are gonna try to capitalize on that momentum. They're going hurry up. Gleason. Pump fake, now he's going to look to his left. Trying to find a receiver and will find Vaughn. And Vaughn made the catch at the 16 yard line, so it's a gain of five, or nine. Don't forget that Gleason can run the ball well. Also, had nearly 3,500 yards of total offense coming into this game, and that included 338 on the ground and seven touchdown runs. Has to get rid of that quickly. Southeastern coming in, and there's the pressure by Michael Rogers. And Rogers that time going with the blitz, came around the edge, and Gleason never saw him coming until it was time to get rid of the football. He started to go down as he was throwing it, and it falls short. Now on third and short, we'll see if Emporia State sticks with the air game or if they'll try to get it on the ground. They've had success in both capacities. So maybe a bit of a pick your poison situation here. <laughs> yeah. Gleason has a man in motion who lines up on the right and the give is to Brooks. Finds an opening in the middle, past the 10 and down to the six yard line. Strong run up the middle, and again, the offensive line creating some space, and we'll hope to single out some of those individuals later in the broadcast as Emporia State has been running the hurry up. Well, it's tough to do now, another Southeastern player down. And now if you take a, cynic, a cynical view of this, then you might say that Southeastern has a couple of injuries that will slow down that Emporia State hurry, uh, hurry up offense. For Southeastern, it's Jalen Shaw that is down near the goal line. Now that's, that's a cynical perspective. But really, if you look at how much success this team has had all day long, you gotta be feeling pretty good about the Hornets' chances trying to punch the ball in here. They've gotten some great protection up the middle as you see the run here. This is a great offensive line, one of the best you're going to find in the MIAA. And really, it starts with Connor Lears. We haven't gotten to talk about him yet, but 
really one of the leaders, not only of this offensive line unit, but he's also a team captain. And that's a big reason why he was named a first team all super region player by the Division II Conference Commissioners Association. He's first team all MIAA, and he's also up for the Gene Upshaw Award for best lineman in the country. He's had a phenomenal campaign. Now, I mentioned to um, the great Don Weist, who is the sports information director for Emporia State. Fantastic SID. Is, get to know a lot of these, these wonderful gentlemen and, and ladies that are SIDs here in, uh, in college. Is the pass to the end zone, is it enough? Is it there? The catch is made and another touchdown for Braden Gleason on the day. Wow, what an offering he's had. That time again, Emporia State finding the end zone through the air. Fifth touchdown of the game, I believe, for Gleason through the air, and he finds another target here. It's going to be number 12, Will Amos. And what can you say other, about the passing attack other than it's been fantastic? It has been fan Well, you probably would run out of superlatives before the day is over with. Extra point is up and good. We will complete that story here in just a moment as we come back. Well, I'll tell you what, there is a flag down on the play. Running into the kicker, the penalty is declined. We'll take a break. We'll come back and, and tell you the rest about that. And Connor Lear is here in just a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Yeah, I've got choices. I'm ready for my future. Your future, your choice. Emporia State with another touchdown and continuing to roll here in the Live United Bowl up 45 to 13 now and to the point we're making, talking with the Sports Information Director from Emporia State, Don Wiest, and I said, you know, we, we do want to mention Connor Lears today. Definitely want to talk about him. He's had a great season and he's somebody we want to talk about and we, he, he mentioned, yeah, but you don't want to talk about him too much. If you're talking about the offensive lineman too much, if you mention his name too often, that's probably not a good sign. So... <laughs> We'll mention him and say, yes, it has been a fantastic season. But, no, he's done nothing but the right things today. Whitley once again picks up. Well, he had picked up 10, and then he ran the other direction. Uh, a net gain of only six on that return. And Emporia State bouncing back in special teams. Really southeastern at the end of the second quarter and into the start of the third. Really southeastern dominating special teams. They'd almost gotten an onside kick on that last kickoff, and here, the Hornets, again, swarming to the ball. Really nothing the return man could do there as Whitley tried to get something going, and then when he reversed the field, there were enough defenders to greet him there and pull him down. And now Dalton Hatley and his unit, they're going to have their work cut out for them. They're going to have to go 89 yards here to try to go for the score. Hatley fakes the handoff. He's going to keep it himself. They'll get close to the 20, but flags are coming in more than one direction. This is likely going to go against the storm. Holding is probably going to be called against Southeastern here to give that opportunity for Hatley. Flags are repositioned at the 17 yard line and that's from where this penalty will be walked off. So it's half the distance to the goal down to about the eight and a half. And we'll get another look at it here. Trying to get some space to the right side, and there's where the, the hold is on the right side, trying his best to contain Hamas, but got way too much jersey there, and that's going to back up the Savage Storm. After the penalties marked off, clock starts running once again. Not the friend of the Storm here in this game. Trying to make their way back into it. There's the play action look there. 
Pass across the middle, making up many of those yards there, up to about the 17. Trail Blakely with the catch. Second and five. Hadley's crossed that 3,200 yard passing mark as well. Pass behind Gray on second down. Think about what what Hadley's done too. I mean, again, to go back. It's, it's a quality season for any quarterback to have a 3,000-yard passing season. But to do it in back-to-back -back years and, you know, really coming back from uh, the COVID year for Southeastern, that was a big step for Coach Fenwick's squad. We talked about the turnaround and uh, a plus eight turnaround from 2019 to 2021. The COVID year is a wash. And how they did that was a number of players that, that stuck with the program. I mean, he was a new coach in 2019. His team won one game that year. Uh, lots of players might have said, you know what, we want to go do something else and, and, you know, leave town after that 2019 season. Most of them did not, including Hatley, stuck around. They have a great turnaround. He gets 3,000 yards passing. And a number of those players are back for their final season here uh, for Southeastern and, and playing here today. Uh, and he's able to pick up the 3,000-yard passing mark again, well more than 3,200 now. And you can tell that Hatley is just a natural-born leader with the squad. You see it in the chemistry that he has with his wide receivers. You've seen it in the throws to Gray and Kincaid. Just so much confidence in each other to go out and make those plays. Pass caught by Kincaid to the 40, stays on his feet to midfield. Well, the case in point right there. Again, Kincaid running around over the middle and making a play for Southeastern. Going to take another look here on the play action. Is beautiful route, beautiful catch over the middle. Hatley making a great throw, and really nothing more you can ask for there if you're the Savage Storm. Oh, and again, the uh, fourth on the all-time list there for Southeastern at midfield now. Storm trying to make something happen here late in the third quarter. Hatley has plenty of time. And looks across the middle. There's Kincaid again sliding into makes the catch. That's enough for the first down, a gain of 12. And the third quarter will come to an end with that catch. Southeastern will be heading back to the east and hoping to make up part of this deficit. But it's a big Emporia State lead, 32 points. The Emporia State Hornets have the advantage as we head to the fourth quarter in the 2022 edition of the Live United Bowl. Looking back, I think I was a little nervous starting college. But from the moment I arrived at OBU, it felt like home. I found new friends, we laughed together, studied together, and learned what it means to be a bison. Amy. I got to know my professors and found out that they really care about me. I found my place at OBU. Back home, the world seems small. Here, it has expanded. I've been challenged and have grown in knowledge and in spirit. I've been part of something bigger, something special. Surrounded and supported by new brothers and sisters who were once strangers. And my sense of community and my role in it has grown too. Harding University, a community of mission. Fourth quarter about to get underway here. Southeastern with the first down and the storm on the move as Hatley has not had the best day so far from a point production, but he has been able to, you know, get first downs, find his receivers pretty often. That time a little bit behind uh, his intended receiver there. 
in uh, Blakely. And Chase, I know there are GAC, just another GAC team playing as well today in, in another bowl game. It's the Heritage Bowl in Corsicana, and for the GAC, it's a better result as East Central is playing Texas A&M Kingsville, and the Tigers lead that one 38 to seven in the third quarter. All right. Southeastern would like to make it a 2-0 day for the Great American Conference. Uh, right now, it's going to be a tough row to hoe. Trailing by 32 here in the fourth, it would be a, a phenomenal comeback if the Storm were able to pull it off and to give to Wu. He's able to take it 10 yards, and they'll move the chains. First down, Southeastern. Wu showing off some fancy footwork there at the end of the play as well. There were a couple of times where it looked like he was going to be taken down, but he just made his way around the defender. We're going to take another look here. Good separation up the middle, but you see the spin move and the juke to the left side. Just kept trucking forward for more yards and ends up getting the first down. The Savage Storm will be looking for more plays like that here down the stretch as they try to make the comeback. Well, after that play in the give, this one's wrapped up in the backfield. He'll go down for a loss here, second and long on the way. But what's happening is, is a lot of time is ticking off. You get a running play like that, even though it's a 10-yard play, it takes a while to get the, the, the line back up there, get everyone set, and 40-plus seconds went off the clock from that play alone. And tackled in the background or backfield here, the clock continues to run. Less than 14 minutes remaining. So Emporia State sitting pretty right now. And have three down linemen looking, showing blitz, rushing four. Hatley with time, throws over the middle, looking for Blakely and finds him in for the score. Right across the middle of the field, 32-yard touchdown pass from Dalton Hatley to uh, Cottrell Blakely. Well, it took him just over three quarters, but Dalton Hatley has finally found the end zone on a beautiful pass here over the middle, doing what he's done so many times this season, putting the ball where only his man can get to it. Great job there catching it in stride for Blakely on the connection. From a fellow senior, a senior to senior connection, nice to see here in the fourth quarter of the game. And Hatley and his squad are looking for more here as they go for two. Braden Gleason now with 33 touchdown passes on the season. Hatley now has crossed that 30 plateau as well. Hatley's going to roll out, trying to find someone to the left side of the end zone. Can't find anyone with a blue jersey. And the two-point conversion attempt is no good, but the Storm put six more on the board, and it is now 45-19, the 2022 edition of the Live United Bowl. We have more coverage here on the GAC Sports Network next. Running outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform. They need to be the best. The merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs. That's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. see you, your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith, first to get to work, first to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. It's 
your moment. Boise State ready to receive today. As there's a flag after the play. By the way, that pushes the uh, the ball back five yards. Thank you. And so Southeastern will attempt to kick off from the 35. That's not the first time today that uh, Southeastern at the ball, by the way, fell off the tee there, but Southeastern on the kickoff has been on the negative side of it, both receiving the kickoff and now kicking here. And that ball is taken at the 14 by Ross, and he just slides down at the 21, a return of seven yards. With the lead at this size, maybe trying to provide more of a field for the offense to work with to try and melt off some more clock. That, that was an awkward looking slide. That was that was the thing there. It's like a last second decision there for sure. It, it was. You know, you, and I know in the NFL sometimes uh, a team might uh, have a, a running back late in the game, run from the five and then stop at the one to let more time tick off. I mean, you've seen that happen before. And, could be something like that here. Ross ready to run now as the clock will continue to move after he picks up nine yards. Nine on the carry for Ross. Leading carry this carry this season for Emporia State. And the ball did pop out there at the end of the play, but the ball carrier was already down. Just one, one turnover on the day for Emporia State, and that was the block punt. Looks like there was movement there, and, and that's, in fact, was the call. So Emporial State will move back five yards to bring up second and six now. Clock starts again. You know, for Emporia State, if you, if you want to at this point in time, because the offense really has not shown much signs of, of being slowed down that much today, uh, keep it on the ground as many opportunities as you can, or pick up the, uh, the quick screen pass, just like that. And the extended drive, 80, nearly it. Of course, it started 21, 79 yards down the field. Just work it, work it, work it, work that clock off. You have to pick up first downs every time, and this is where the Hornets need to do this. Third and short, so Emporia State would need to pick up two here. Likely not going to go for it on four down in uh, this deep in their own territory. Gleason is on the run now and gets rid of it. Catch made by Vaughn, and they will move the chains there. An interesting call there to Audible out of the run and into the pass that time, but it does work out. Gleason looked a little bit confused. I think he was confused by the play call there, but he ended up going with it and made a great play there, throwing it to Varner on the left side for the first down. I make sure I said that too, Varner, not Vaughn. Good catch. Ross up the middle, and Ross with all kinds of room. Got going in about at midfield. Looked like, wow, this has opened up big time here. Well, Joey, we mentioned it earlier in the game. This is going to be a battle in the trenches, trying to win the battle at the line. And thus far, Emporia State's been winning the battle on both sides of the ball as we have an official's timeout for a substitution. And that is a promising sign indeed as Alex Marshall is going to step back onto the field. It's good that the senior's going to get to go out there and take some final snaps here in his last game. We were worried he went down with an injury earlier. We didn't know if we'd see him back, but good to see him back out there with the rest of his teammates. Exactly. Marshall comes in, slows things down just a bit. Now the Emporia State offense on the move again. Gleason, and the give is to Ross. Gain of one. The way he, he moved at the line there, it looked uh, similar to what you might see if, if uh, running back was moving to place the ball in the middle of the field for a field goal attempt. Gleason again, now, well, looked like he might have found Ross there. In and out of his hands, it's an incomplete pass. And now we have some words that are being exchanged near the line of scrimmage. Jared Bell for Southeastern and a number of Emporia State players there. Bell's going to go to the sideline for Southeastern. Uh, coaching staff's going to get him out of there. Temper's a little bit strained at this point in time. 
That's right. Southeastern doesn't want to lose another player to ejection. We've seen one ejection already. Don't want to have another one here. So maybe a good, good idea there by the coaching staff to, to pull a few players off the field and try to release some of that tension. Hornet fan base here in Mass today, making a trip down from Emporia, Kansas. Had a lot to cheer about, too. Cheerleaders, the dance team, color guard as Gleason is looking deep. Contact, and it will draw the flag. Southeastern pass interference, Emporia State will pick up a first down. Gleason trying to find Dexter Swinehart deep down the field, and there's just too much contact from the Southeastern defender. Emporia State will pick up the first down by way of penalty. So that's a third and long pickup, and Emporia State will keep, keep this drive moving. And still a great play on the ball by Emporia State's wideout as he almost still came down with the ball. Even despite the contact, there was plenty of contact, as you can see there on your screen. So good call there from the officiating crew. And it'll be a fresh set of downs now for Emporia State. Texans Weinhardt with 31 receptions coming in, one of those six players for Emporia State that had at least 30 catches and at least 300 yards receiving. Fake and the give to Ross, met in the backfield and taken down in the backfield. Alex Marshall in on the tackle for Southeastern along with Lynn Chilton. Great play there by Marshall going all the way across the line of scrimmage. It was a bit of mis a misdirection. He came around the edge and ended up going all the way across the field to make the tackle. Great to see a tackle for loss for the senior, especially after we didn't know if we'd see him again in this game. Second and long now, Gleason. Quick pass, Barner on the outside, stays in bounds, and will make it back close to the original line of scrimmage. It's gonna be third and around 10 coming up. And Barner did the smart move, didn't go out, stays in bounds, comes back in, and will be third and long on the way. Bring up third and 11. Fox stopped momentarily like one of the southeastern players was a little slow getting up they started again now and we're at the 10 minute mark for Emporia State the Hornets getting ready to celebrate here as uh, they're looking to rack up another bowl victory this one a uh, bit of a uh, Vengeance here in the Live United Bowl. Contact across the middle, not quite five yards out. And uh, it's now fourth and 11. And the Hornets offense can to stay on the field. Into Southeastern territory here. And with a 26 point cushion. Fourth and 11, Gleason finds Ross across the middle. He pushes forward and he has the first down for Emporia State. The Hornets continue to move here in Texarkana. And the Emporia State tailback that time, able to sneak out of the backfield and run over the mill for a nice route. And then it was a good run out of her catch because I mean, really the defense was closing in quickly there towards the first down marker, but not before Brooks had the first down and then a yard or two more. Big fourth down conversion there for Emporia State as they continue to try and run some more time off of the clock. First and 10, Gleason the give to Ross. And Ross met by a host of storm defenders there. It's up around two on the carry. One on the carry. And the Hornets, this is just a, a really good possession. Started at their own 21 yard line. Picked up a couple first downs. Got a big pass interference penalty to move the chains one more time. On fourth down, picked up another first down. 
just been successful in every facet of the game today. Gleason flushed out, running to his left. He'll keep it and run out of bounds. And a flag is thrown after the fact. Looked like Gleason was hit. You should see what this is. I mean, it was it was after Gleason had gone out of bounds. One of the Storm defenders. There we go. One of the defenders was down on the sideline. Saw him go down, but didn't see the block that took place there. So that blindside block, it's a, it's a relatively new call, and it's uh, trying to keep players from being injured. So we may get a chance to, to look at it right here. We see Gleason flushed out. There you see it right there, there it at the end of the play. That one's close. That one was pretty close. Southeastern defender in pursuit there. They'll mark it back. And you know, realistically, for Emporia State, you don't want the penalty. You don't want to, the loss of yards, but just keeps the clock moving after it started again following the penalty. Just trying to make up a few more yards on the day. Gleason again, now rolling out, flushed out to his left, tackled just past the 20 yard lines, and or 20 yard line, Gleason makes it to the 19. And now in this third and long situation, more than likely gonna see the Hornets try to air it out a bit here, maybe even go for the end zone on this next passing play. At the very least, trying to maybe keep it in the center of the field for a field goal. Hornets have four wide here, and now they're gonna tighten the package a little bit. Brooks is a blocker. Gleason looks to the end zone, and the catch is uh, no. Was it a catch or was it an interception? Looked like it might have been taken away at the last moment. And you think down there something like that is uh, Common. Well, it looked like Common had it and then taken away by Southeastern at the last moment. We we'll get a chance to look at this again. Common waiting for it to come in. He has it in his hands and I don't know it hits the turf. Nice defense by Southeastern. It's an interesting angle from, from our perspective up here, and the sun's in our eyes a bit too. So nice to see that replay. Of course, the GAC Sports Network crew, great camera people here. Nice the kick is up, and it is good. 29 points now, the advantage. 48-19, Emporia State has extended its lead here in the fourth quarter and taken a lot of time off the clock in doing it. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. I'm ready for my future. Your future, your choice. Yeah. If you have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide the opportunity. Looking back, I think I was a little nervous starting college. But from the moment I arrived at OBU, it felt like home. I found new friends, we laughed together, studied together, and learned what it means to be a bison. Amy. I got to know my professors and found out that they really care about me. 
I found my place at OBU. Razorback Stadium here in Texarkana. And it's been a nice day today. Good day for the Hornets to come out, that's for sure. And it is not a short trip from Emporia, Kansas by any means, but the Hornet faithful have been here in strong support. Strong showing too from Durant as well with the Savage Storm. This hasn't been as good of a result for them. Well, you saw in the early going from the outset today, we, we saw some shots at the tailgating, and uh, it's a good place to tailgate up the east side, the, beyond the end zone. Both teams, again, were well represented there. Of course, the tailgating's all been taken down now, and uh, folks are in Razorback Stadium. Emporia State fans with plenty to cheer about. A little chip shot there, and it is taken at the 30 to the 40 on his feet and moving down the field southeastern past midfield and a little bit beyond for the storm there as ryan hurt takes it down to about the 35 yard line southeastern with an opportunity to try to make something happen here in the fourth how about the red shirt freshman here hurt coming up with the big return on special teams. We've seen some really good special teams plays here since the start of the second quarter for Southeastern. They've had a blocked punt, and they've had two really good returns. Another great return here getting all the way down to the 35 yard line. And now Dalton, Hatley and company, they haven't had many short fields to work with in this game, but here's a case right here. Hatley has the opportunity, he has five wide right now, so. I can probably make something happen quickly. You give to Pittman, a couple of blockers in front of him. Spins past one tackler and he's making it down. Uh, he'll make it about eight yards in. Second and two on the way. There is a Southeast player down. It's, it's like one of the linemen is slow to get up. It's like it's Daquan Montgomery. Another senior for the Savage Storm that you don't want to see go down, especially in this last game of the year, last game of his career. He's moving slowly and the staff attending to him right now. I'll tell you what, let's take a break as Emporia State has a big lead here in the Live United Bowl. We'll be back in a moment here on the GAC Sports Network. In high school, people described me as bright, hardworking, and dedicated. That I had a big heart because I care about people and doing the right things. Now, everywhere I look, I see an entire community just like that. Learning more, doing more, and caring more. A community of mission, Harding University. Montgomery has been helped up and receive some assistance to make it to the southeastern side of the field and that's a long walk all the way across the field right now. A little bit indicative of the storm's day today. It's just been a tough, tough road to hoe all the way around. Emporia State has made all the right moves at all the right times on offense, on defense. Everything has just looked solid today for Coach Higgins' group and uh, a fantastic afternoon. I mean, so much can be said for Emporia State this season, trying to put that ninth win in the column this year to, to uh, end the year at nine and three, and they're well on the way to doing it. It's been another great year for Emporia State as they put together a strong campaign. We mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, but this is a team that was right on the fringes. If one or two drives maybe go differently, you're looking at this team playing in the Division II playoffs. But this is a team that rose to the occasion here in the Live United Bowl. They were excited to play here today. They brought out a great crowd to Texarkana on what's been a really fun day here for both sides, for the community as well. It's just been a great day of football. This is a team that uh, is looking to uh, make some noise in the future as well. Statement this year as to how close they were to the playoffs. The give to High, didn't find any room in the middle, tries to bounce to the outside. He'll be close to the first down. I'm not sure that he'll make it just yet. I think it's going to be just a bit shy. Southeastern all time, by the way, uh, coming into this game. We want to talk about a team that's uh, been 500 forever. Well, they really are right now. 507, 507, and 44. That's the all-time record for Southeastern coming in today. Now, 
Uh, looks like they might uh, be slightly under 500. If they can't make up some ground here. High's trying to do just that. 10, 5, and touchdown. Southeastern. Caleb High, 26 yards out. Carries the ball in for the score for Southeastern. And the storm now with six more on the board. And this will be a bright spot that Southeastern is going to go back to look at is look at the separation created there up the middle by the offensive line. Just a beautiful carry up the middle. Some good defense as the Hornets tried to close in, but too much space up the middle. And it was a house call. Highest senior. Which realistically, it's it's been so tough to know exactly what those categories mean in, in terms of eligibility with that COVID year from 2020. Being a junior or even a senior or whatever really hasn't seemed to mean that much. Two-point conversion is good. Two Pass across to Kincaid and Southeastern with two more points on the board. They trail by just 21. A little bit less than five and a half remaining in this one. Emporia State still on top, 48-27. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. Advantage Billy Ross back to receive. I was making trust the United Bowl 2022 edition. And Southeastern looking to for an onside kick opportunity. It will roll finally make it past the 10 yards it needs. Thomas is there to recover for Emporia State, and that was an interesting bounce or two on the onside kick attempt. Finally rolled the 10 yards it needed to and Emporia State could have gone up and gotten it at any point in time, but they were just content to let it see if it was going to roll dead. It's, uh, actually pretty close. Whitley was in the vicinity for Southeastern. Thomas is there to make the recovery. He was lurking for sure, but Emporia State was ready to pounce on it when the opportunity arose. And a couple of guys standing there at the 45-yard line. They come down with it at the 46. Now we're getting some Christmas carols, too, from both bands here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> it's that time of year. We're here in December. Flag looked like, it sounded like the flag or the whistle was blown before the play got started. This is likely going to go against Emporia State, I would think, here. Illegal formation is the call, so a walk back five. And Emporia State looking at first and 15 here. It's been an offense, though, that's been consistent over the course of the day. Heavy firepower in the first half. 31 first half points, and since then a field goal and touchdown, another field goal. Ross is slung down in the backfield. Yeah. Tate tackle for Southeastern. So after, after the five yard penalties marked off, two more yards lost on that play. And Southeastern still playing till the end here. Emporia State's got a plenty of time to play with as they try to lock up win number nine on the year. And Joey, with that win, they'll be tied for the fifth most wins in a season in program history. It's been a great year 
for the Hornets. And they're another team that overall in their history, they've hovered around 500 as well. They're actually three games under 500 right now with a win here today, looking to advance to two games under 500 and perhaps looking to get into the black next year. Well, the, the, the pace they're going would not be surprised by that at all. Just a pretty good program. And with as much success as they've had in the last decade, you would expect them to be in the black already, but this is a program that's had a lot of recent success. I'm sure they'd like to improve on some things going into next year. We'll talk about Emporia State here in just a moment. Uh, when we come back from this break, Southeastern calling a timeout here in the fourth quarter. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? Creating culture, certainly when we graduate students, they go out and they create culture in classrooms. They create culture in churches. They create culture uh, anywhere they go. Coming out of the timeout, and Leeson, he's flushed out, just has to sling it away, trying to uh, get past the pursuit of Kevin Symes in the Emporia State backfield, fourth and long, and the punting unit makes another appearance in this contest. We haven't seen that very often. Just the third time today, and we haven't seen a single punt from Southeastern, if you can believe that. Now, they have made up for that in terms of turnovers, as there have been five turnovers for the Savage Storm, along with two turnovers on downs. But the offense really has started to get some momentum here in the second half. It was just a case it looks like a too little, too late. Not, not much time on the clock left with which to work here. Southeastern looks to have one more opportunity here. Fielded at the seven. And Gray will take it out past the 15 to about the 17-yard line. Long field for Southeastern. Now we talked about, uh, you're right, the success in the last decade, and, and, and we mentioned too just what uh, Coach Higgins has done. In the last 10 years plus a little bit, Coach Higgins' record is 84 and 43, I believe. Something's 81 and 43. 81 and 43, that's right, coming in. And right now he's currently the second winningest active coach in the MIAA. Has had a fantastic career at Emporia State. And the Hornets just keep getting better with every passing season. This was a playoff contender team this year. They still got a bowl game bid and had a great performance here today. This is one of those years I think that they're going to look at to use as a building block going forward because you know that the Hornets have higher aspirations too. Looking to the future, they got a lot of talent. but. When you look at a season like this, this is a perfect way to cap it off with a good win here. This is a good place to play, even when you're not in the playoffs. You get to play in a bowl game, that's something special. Not every team gets to do that. Well, there are a lot of things that come from that extra extra opportunity as Southeastern to Gray up to the 40-yard line, and he'll pick up the first down. There, there are a number of things. Number one, back-to-back -back seasons now in the postseason. And Emporia State as a program is, is used to making it into the postseason, so it helps with recruiting right there. But the other thing is the fact that you get an extra few opportunities. Ken Cade with the catch and a gain of about 25 on that pass. It'll be 25 and another first and 10. You get the opportunity then to practice uh, for another week or two. And uh, that's invaluable. Uh, so many other teams in the country won't have that opportunity. You have the opportunity to get out there, let some of your uh, veterans play, Get some younger players an opportunity, maybe a little bit more. Hatley rolling out. In and out of the hands and finally taken in. The catch is actually made by Hawthorne. It'll wind up being a loss of one. And for Southeastern, the clock will continue to run. Well, for us, this game has been played in December all these years. I think this is the first Battle of Christmas carols that I've uh, heard from the two bands. Hadley looking across the middle. 
And a low catch, but it is still a reception. Kincaid picks up another first down, and Kincaid's a little slow getting up. I think that was an awkward catch there. It may have landed on the ball. Be careful on low catches like that. You see it right here. Goes right into his chest. Wonder if maybe the wind got knocked out of him as he went down to the turf. Kincaid really has been one of the standout performers today for Southeastern. He's had a, a great game despite the result for his team. You hate to see him go down this late in the contest, especially after the performance he's put on for this crowd. Well, he's had seven catches for 120 yards. 0 for 1 passing today, too. That one wasn't successful on the trick play there, but uh, actually eight catches now for 120 yards. That, that last one factored in just before I got through, re or right after I was reading that. Eight catches, 120 yards, averaging 15 yards per catch. So it's basically been a, a first down plus every time he's had the ball. We've got a score update, too, from Corsicana in the Funtown RV Heritage Bowl, ECU. The deficit has been narrowed. It's now 38-21. Texas A&M Kingsville looking to rally, but just two minutes to go in regulation. Tigers had a good season in the GAC this year. New coaching staff. And East Central has been able to take advantage, make things, make things happen in 2022. Coach McCullough had the interim tag taken off. He is a full-time head coach now. Southeastern second and long. And this one to Wu. Tries to bounce out. He'll make up a little bit of what was lost. It's still third and 11 now. So the MIAA and the GAC going to get to ride off into the sunset a little bit today. Both conferences getting one winner. So good into the season for two conferences, too, that also had playoff representatives that had a good showing. Obviously, Washita drew a tough break out of the MIAA with Northwest Missouri State, who just absolutely dominated that game at Cliff Harris Stadium. But still, some great football being played in both of these conferences, and it's great to see two of their best representatives here today in Texarkana. Trell Blakely with the reception that time. It'll be a fourth down at about six now, and Southeastern going to keep the offense on the field here, try to make something happen in the final minute of this Live United Bowl. They'll call a timeout. Thomas Brink and Trust, Live United Bowl here. We'll take a break with them. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network. What does it mean to be a Ranger? It means smaller class sizes so you're seen and heard. It means graduating debt-free like over half of our students. It means getting help when you need it through financial aid and scholarships like more than 80% of our students. To be a Ranger, you're rowdy with excitement. To be a Ranger, you care about your education. To be a Ranger, you saddle up to a challenge and ride to success. Rowdy lives here. Rangers live here. Northwestern. Success lives here. Storm call a timeout to talk things over now. Fourth and six. Uh, realistically, though, it's about, I want to say maybe fourth and 19. They want to put it in the end zone here or uh, something. Keep this drive alive. Put more points on the board before the season comes to a conclusion here. Hatley with four receivers, two wide to either side. Wu in the backfield with him. And coming out of that timeout, he's looked over the defense. He's seen what he wants to see now. The receivers on the left side, more stacked. And they run their routes a little bit differently here. Hatley keeps it. Going to try to pick up the first down himself. And he will do that. Or will he? He's close to the yard marker at the 14. And it really depends on where it's spotted. And it's not going to be enough. From this vantage, it looks clearly short. And the official does finally make the call. Yeah, I mean, he looked like he was well more than a half yard, maybe a full yard short from where he started his slide. So the Emporia State offense will come back out on the field 
And one more time, it'll be a victory formation as Emporia State will pick up its ninth win of the season, nine and three on the year. Southeastern will fall to six and six following this loss. I can't say enough about what Coach Higgins' staff and the team has done today. Had the great game plan today, but you know what? Executed it as well. And it was a complete game in every phase. And that play that we just saw there, Dalton Hatley came up a little bit short. That'll be his last play from scrimmage for his college career. But what a career it's been for him and what a season it's been for the Savage Storm. The senior leaders had a great year. First team all GAC selection faced off against a Harlan Hill candidate in the form of Gleason here today. But Durant's gunslinger is going to ride off into the sunset. Not the way he was hoping for in Texarkana but still had one opportunity to go out here. Put on a pretty good show, over 400 yards passing. Emporia State, however. Southeastern's calling a timeout. Interestingly enough, the, actually the game clock had less time on it than the play clock, so that would have been the last time Emporia State had, had to uh, take a knee there, but the storm, Coach Fenwick's gonna talk with his team as a whole, one more time on this field. And you want to talk about some parting words here. This is uh, this is that final opportunity to say, look guys, uh, for, for those of you that are seniors, you know, we have to play one more game. We have to play that 12th game, as you mentioned. For those of you that are coming back, remember this feeling, because you don't want this feeling anymore. I've, I've heard some of the, the great athletes say in the past that that they, they really liked winning, but they hated losing more than they liked winning. And that's what would drive them to success and to be even more than what they were. So it's one of those times to say, remember this feeling. You don't like this feeling, make it different next year. We had a great year in 2021. 2022, we're going to end up at 500 at 6-6. Six and six. You want to be back and playing in the postseason again? We've got uh, the year to hit the weights and remember what this feels like. And I wonder if some of that is what was being said in the conversation there. Maybe just a thing or just a way to talk things over. But the time for talk is over because this game is just about wrapped up, waiting for it to hit double zeros. But both silence are about to empty Emporia State in one of the most complete football games you're going to see in postseason play, taking home the win in the Live United Bowl. Coach Higgins got the Gatorade bath as the band counts down the clock on the scoreboard. Zeros on the board and a win in the column for Emporia State. Number nine on the year, 48-27 is the final score. Emporia State, great offensive day today as uh, Braden Gleason, five touchdown passes in the win today. The defense came up big as well. Five turnovers, three forced fumbles and recoveries, two interceptions as as well, my goodness, you just can't, can't say enough about what Emporia State did today. But we're going to try here in just a moment. We'll take a break and be back here in just a little bit here on the GAC Sports Network.
Dogs all around for Emporia State. Coach Higgins, a fantastic day for him and for the Hornets as a whole. What a great win as uh, the, the team down there, see a little bouncing there around in your camera. They're just dancing as the band plays on. Coach Higgins celebrates. My goodness, what a run he's had. His 15th season at the helm at Emporia State, and it ends with a victory. And it doesn't get any better than this. Great turnout from both the Emporia State faithful and Southeastern faithful, too. We're starting to see them empty out of the seats. But the stands are still full here on the home side, awaiting that trophy presentation. And I'm going to tell you, Joey, the committee's going to have a bit of a task on their hands here trying to pick an MVP because when you have a complete team win like this, it's hard to single out one individual for MVP. That was the task that they had at hand. We'll see who they choose. But you see all the hugs being exchanged there after a phenomenal victory here today for Emporia State. The Hornets. There's a lot to be said for uh, for so many different players. I, I, I'll throw out some numbers for you really quickly though. 22 for 34 passing. 253 yards and five touchdowns and uh, no interceptions. That's a tough number to beat. Right pretty there. It really is a tough, tough number to beat there. 64.7% completion uh, on the day for Braden Gleason. And we look down these numbers too a little bit more. Uh, Jaden Penn Marner with uh, seven catches, 78 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Kevin Thomas, seven catches, 61 yards, a touchdown. Tyler Common, uh, three catches, 42 yards, and a touchdown. Amos had a touchdown as well, and a one reception. That was for six yards. Uh, Billy Ross on the day today, 11 carries for 47 yards, averaging 4.3 yards per carry as well. And Gleason himself had seven carries, 34 yards, averaging 4.9 carries. Don't forget about Brooks, 13 carries, 38 yards on the day. But it really was about that passing game for Emporia State. Meanwhile, for Southeastern, Dalton Hatley, 32 for 45 passing, had one touchdown, two interceptions. And actually, I think that's uh, yeah, the one touchdown pass, two interceptions on the day. 429 yards passing on the day. That's absolutely uh, phenomenal, and it puts him for his career at 3,400. 92 yards, almost 3,500 yards, not for the career, for the season. 3,492 yards, that's a, a season mark for Southeastern as well. That's going to be tough to do. And for Emporia State, you see them circling around the trophy presentation table right now. What a moment for this program, especially after how last year ended. A heartbreaker here at Live United. You know that that had to be in the back of their minds all season long. And to get to play the same team that you played last year and to be as dominant as they were here today, that's got to be a special moment the entire crowd here from Emporia. Yeah, I mean, it, it came down to the closing seconds last year. Uh, you can read for a picture there. There was there was no doubt. There was no doubt this year. The uh, MVP about to be announced. And the uh, Farmers Bank and Trust trophy about to be given here for the Live United Bowl. They were going to come out and give the trophy, but uh, well, one more picture first. Let's get to one more picture as well. So we've got a pretty excited Hornet team behind us, don't we? Kind of a, kind of a different story from last year's ball game, isn't it? At this time, before we get to our trophy presentation, we want to name the MVP, and the MVP is handled by all the guys in the press box. Our MVP that's going to receive the MVP trophy today is going to be presented by James Bramlett, which is the president of our Texas County Farmers Bank and Trust, he is number 38, Cade Harrison. Cade Harrelson. Seven tackles today, three tackles for loss. Put Southeastern 18 yards in the hole. And also don't forget the fumble recovery as well. An all around so phenomenal effort. I'm glad to see it on the defensive side of the ball because this defensive unit, that linebacking core in particular, is a big part of today's victory. 
uh, prior to, uh, I want to say a couple words prior to giving out our championship trophy for the 2022 Farmers Bank and Trust Live United Bowl. James? Thank you, Mayor Brown. It's an honor to be a part of this great event today again in 2022. We can't say enough how proud we are for both teams, for being in our community, and for all their parents, and the band, and everybody that supports them, and made this a successful day in this community. Congratulations, Coach Higgins, and Boria State for being the champions this year. Congratulations, great game. Southeast Oklahoma, thank you for being a really good opposing team today, and we just can't tell you enough that we're proud you are both of you for having a successful year in 2022. Thanks, James. So Hold on just a minute. He liked to tackle me for it last year and come up a little short, so I'm going to give it to you for sure. But I do want to thank all you guys for coming out from Emporia, Kansas and supporting the uh, Farmers Bank and Trust Live United Bowl. This is something that we certainly enjoy doing. It's great for our community. It's great for the United Way. I hope you guys had a great trip here. We would not hesitate to ever invite the Emporia Hornets back to Texas and I can tell you that. At this time, it's my honor on behalf of Farmers Bank and Trust to present the, this year's 2022 championship trophy to Coach Garen Higgins and the Emporia State Hornets. Emporia State celebrating its championship here in the uh, 2022 Farmers Bank and Trust Live United Bowl. A dominant victory today and the final score 48 to 27. Chase, final thoughts here on the Emporia State victory today. Well, I think that visual says it all. Coach Higgins being lifted up by his team. What a finish to the day for Emporia State as they celebrate really a redemption game. This was a season that Emporia State is going to look back, I think, on for years to come. Really a building block for a team that continues to get better with each passing season. Hats off to Dalton Hatley and the Southeastern crew as well. They had a great season as well. Finished off the year at 500, but had a great season in the GAC. But the MIAA representative, Emporia State, coming away with a victory today. A nine-win season, nothing to scoff at for sure. And to cap it off with a decisive victory like this, it doesn't get it any better for a program like Emporia State. It's going to be fun to see what this team does in the future. Emporia State again with a 21-point victory today. They wrap up the season at 9-3. Southeastern falls to 6-6 six six in 2022. Both of them, however, playing in the postseason. And they end things here in the Farmers Bank and Trust Live United Bowl 2022. It's been a fantastic afternoon today. We appreciate you all watching here. Great day in Texarkana. I appreciate all of our hosts and Farmers Bank and Trust for being the pres presenting sponsor of this game. And great work by the GAC Sports Network crew as well. It's always fun to get to, to work with the folks there, Matt Johnson, uh, behind the scenes leading the way. So we appreciate that. For Chase Hartzell, I'm Joey McWilliams saying thanks again for watching. Final score 48-27. Uh, Emporia State wins the 2022 Live United Bowl. Thanks for watching. God bless you. Have a great day.